First World Order Radio, final lead, final lead. We are on the air, no doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance, the most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence, an indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, importance, the most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence, an indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, getting your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know how intention is straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're gonna take this level up a notch. We're gonna have stuff to do here. This is not just gonna be about philosophies and theories, shit that works. You have an activated pilot man in which I produced this black chemical called melanin. We, what we did was... <laughs> Playtime is over, my naggas. Welcome back to First World Order Radio. Your host, Dr. Aleem L. Bay. And I'm getting ready to bring on co-host, Brother Grand Sheik R.L. Brother Fahim it is nowadays, isn't it, bro? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Brother, peace and love, Brother Aleem. All right, peace, Doc. The intelligent one, no doubt. And we're getting ready to bring on Brother Panic. I'm pretty sure he's here on the line. Let me get him in. He's out. Hey, can you hear me? <clears throat> yes, sir. Yeah, loud and clear, yeah, brother. Loud and clear. Peace, peace. Good to be here on Wednesday. What's up, brother Lean? What's up, brother L? How's things going? Wonderful, oh, it's wonderful, going good. It's going good. We ready for you to get into this info. This is going to be the second week of the question and answering. And so for those that right. want to call in, the, answer, the um, phone is 626-414-3535. That's 626-414-3535. Give us a call. All right? Um, how you want to start this out tonight, Brother Panic? Same as before. We're going to do it just like we did last week. Yes, sir. All right. All right. Same way we did last week. We're going to get into the Q&A. How, of course, I open up. And uh, this is based upon a lecture that we laid out two <laughs> weeks ago where we gave out detailed information on Kundalini. The information was so detailed that to take two weeks later, we're still doing Q and A on the subject. <laughs> That's and right. I believe it is this is just that important. It, it it deserves just that much attention, based upon uh, you know the subject matter, which is Kundalini enlightenment. The key to your whole conscious path is to find light, period. There's there's no in-between. Everything else, uh, language, clothing, uh, diet, is all just frills. It's all just fillers compared to the, act, the actual true goal of uh, conscious work, which is kundalini enlightenment. Kundalini enlightenment, in a nutshell, is basically primal life force energy that you do have access to, and 
um, but it sleeps in which it sleeps with you because that is the process of Kundalini when you become a human being. So once you have grown past, and it may take you lifetimes, um, human thought. Now you've heard me go hard on human thought and and how how uh, let's just say degraded it is. But if you if you can't go down that route, if you're still having problems with that route. Um, what what you can look at it as, if you're conscious, you've grown beyond human thought, beyond its its corrupt nature. If you can't buy into its corrupt nature by the obvious, you get what I'm saying. Best case scenario, if you're doing the if you're doing the best you possibly can, there's always someone starving on the planet. Mm-hmm. Um, for you to for you to survive and thrive, you must in some way eat off of something. Including vegetation, which, which, on the other hand, you 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 definitely uh, like to say it's alive as well. So you're still vampiring off of vegetation. Something has to die for you to survive. So this this creation itself is a flawed creation. Like I said, you don't have to take my word for it. You get in, into any form of Gnostic thought, any form of Gnostic de- teaching, this will clearly uh, uh, explain itself. But if you really get into any form of mythology and you get, and you're able to get to the level of mythology decoding, what you would come to understand is they wouldn't be talking about these things unless they were talking about moving beyond humanity in in its true nature, and and just the mere fact that they're talking about moving beyond humanity must mean something inherently wrong with it, or the ancients seen something. Is it either inherently wrong with it or it wasn't a final destination? Let's just say that if you can't find nothing wrong with it, what's clear based upon ancient behavior, ancient mythology, um, ancient cultures, that humanity was definitely not the final destination. So when you look throughout the mythologies on the planet, you'll find certain things start to uh, start to uh, Come up over and over again Certain symbols start to replay Themselves over and over again Certain things can be Compared even though These people didn't have a physical uh, A physical Relationship with each other Certain numbers, certain dates Certain theories, certain Concepts seem to keep Reemerging. Now one of Those concepts, one of those Symbols is the symbol of a snake which we have uh, which we have clearly decoded, clearly understand to be the symbol of the life force energy, Kundalini energy, the process of uh, birth and uh, birth regeneration and death regeneration. The symbol shows up throughout every mythology, every culture with a shaman or shamanistic uh, uh, system. The snake seems to be center of it, and we understand this to be the Naga force, which is the Kundalini goddess, which is the origin of the word nigga, which is which which clearly makes you um, the nigga, a Kundalini, a Kundalini being, yeah, an entity, an entity that the world look, looks upon as divine, based upon your access to the Kundalini energy. Now, um, so what's clear, what's clear without having to be deep at all is that this kundalini energy, this life force energy, is, it seems to be the purpose, the purpose for you to get out of bed, to have access to something which sits inside of you that can be expanded into a whole new reality that goes beyond humanity. So, at the very least, two question and answer weekend weeks is 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 the least we could do here for something so important that uh, uh, your whole entire conscious path should be based upon that study, and everything else should layer on top of it. Because once you start getting into layers and different types of study, you'll see is nothing but uh, code or or different ways of accessing kundalini energy, life force energy, whether it's prana, 
chi, your radius energy, any of these things that you want to call it, it's the same concept, same mythology. Whether you're in China, you killed my father, you killed my uncle. They still talk about the damn Osiris set story. I must revenge my father, revenge my, avenge my uncle. They're just talking the same Osiris story, and the same story keeps keeps uh, returning because they're trying to tell you one thing. So I think it's very important we get down to common denominators in this consciousness because what I seem to find out, especially for doing class, the people are all over the place. So, again, we're staying on this subject because I believe it's that important. And I believe we can take one of the first calls. We have enough people on the line, I assume, by now. And we can start with taking some calls if Brother Aline is ready. All right, we're going to go to area code 251. Area code 251, you're on the air. Yo, peace, Brother Lane, Brother peace. Panic, DJ Full Moon. Peace. peace, What's peace. going on, Brother uh, Panic? I'm, I'm sorry this weekend. I just came up on a spur of the moment thing, and I brought the DVDs up there, but uh, it was spur of the moment. I didn't know I was coming up there. I wanted to go oh, by, okay. yeah, Burger. But uh, I ain't had no question. I just want to send an early uh, birthday and got this. Day and Earth Day, uh, shout out to uh, Sister Chris, Christina and uh, Sister Scully. I just want to okay. say happy birthday, happy birthday to happy birthday, Red Fox style. And that's, that's all. <laughs> all right, I seen you, I seen, I seen your profile picture. You got a tight suit on there. <laughs> all right, brother. <laughs> What's going on? Brother? I'll that's be back up the, uh, the <laughs> not this weekend, but next weekend, bro. Your... That's maybe why your pressure's up, dog. That suit is kind of... All right, brother. All right, all right, more. Fresh up. All right, all more. You? All right, brother. All right, more. I, I see you just... I, 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 if I get a chance, just when you come out here, just let me know. So yeah, I, I got to get that Bell Donald, because I had all the movies. Like I say, uh, I was on Union City. I don't know how far I was from you, but uh, I'll be back up there. Like I said, the following okay. weekend. Let me know. It just depends on how busy it is, you know, with classes. And, and actually, I got a world of herb packs to send out. I'm kind of behind. I got a world of that to send out. So if the time is right, you know what I'm saying, then, then we'll get up, brother. Oh, and one more thing. Uh, where can, do anybody in the uh, forum know where I can get some Kenjin water from? I just seen that on the uh, Dr. Deborah Blair uh, avatar video. Lecture. You just got to look in your area for the conscious folks who, because, uh, you know, you, you ain't going to buy a gallon of water. People are going to be mailing it to you. So you got to tap into conscious people around your area usually. Usually, yeah. you know what I mean? And usually there's someone doing this. See, for instance, they do it at the mall over here. Uh, Sister Tahita does it here. You know what I mean? There's uh-huh. a water guy. I can't remember his name. I don't know if he still does it. And there's health food stores that do it. See, we get the five gallon. You can you yeah. get the five gallon uh, water cooler thing. So we get we get that. So you got to. I would just Google that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we don't got none of that here. So uh, like I say, next time I come, I either order the. Uh, I think the dispenser is like four thousand, but we uh, Yeah, well, then uh, when you come up here. Like I said, uh, what I could do, I'll call it Tahita, but you know what I'm saying. They, you got to be ready right. for them because they're not going to do all of that water and you're not going to get it. So you will have to get up, get the bottles, and, you know, look, they have the bottles. They, they'll let you know what what they do if you're going to drive. You know what I'm saying? That's the yeah, best I feel, I do they, say, they say you can keep it. Like, you know how they say the water is harmful once you leave it in the uh, sun with the plastic, but they say this water actually stays in the pH balance. Yeah, it's yeah. a glass bottle so, as well. So, uh, but your number five gallon glass bottles. All right. Well, my number's in your inbox, and like I say, uh, if you you know you see, I got with Brother Aldine, and like I say, I, uh, oh, that, I, I, uh, I, I, pa- I pass you her email. I pass you. Her all email. right, brother. I right, am peace, all right. lady. I see what she's doing. Peace. All right, bro. Get that pressure all down, right. dog. All right, we can go to area code four zero four. Area code four zero four. You on the air? Peace, peace and blessings, brothers. I was just uh, tapping in. This is Brother Unk out of Jacksonville, Florida. Just oh, listening peace, in. Peace, brother. 
Okay, brother, y'all keep it moving. I just thought I'd let y'all know I was in the on the on the air with you. Jacksonville in the building. All right. Thank you. I appreciate that. Right? Okay. All right. Get area code three four seven. Area code three four seven. That's the NY. Let's see what's going on. Yeah, brother, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. How y'all doing tonight, man? Well, yeah, yeah. Um, you know what's funny? I I think this is synchronicity because when this uh, whole Kundalini um talk came into play or the discussion, I started getting into the book uh, Return of the Serpents of Wisdom. Mm -hmm. Right, more. Yeah, yeah. That's the book right there. You know, it gives a lot of. on the kundalini and the uh, yoga and the uh, the it even gives some information on the term nigga, you know. Mm. Mm. Okay. Oh yeah, so I just wanted to start it off with that, but I got two questions for y'all. All right, yeah, that's good though. First synchronicity, like a mug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the uh, first question I got is, uh, you know, the uh, planets, right? That we got in our mm. so-called solar system. Yeah. Um, my question is: Is you know how you got stages of consciousness? Um, in this particular epoch of time, my question is: Were those particular planets still steps of consciousness? You know, as we went along in this evolution and evolutionary stage. Yes. Of you know. Yeah. Yes. I mean. Um, there's so many studies on that, and there's so many. They, they, you can find just the characteristics of each planet, and find you know they 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 make a Mars for war, Saturn for death and the bones, and, and so on and so forth. Venus for the feminine. So I mean, if that's what you're talking about, absolutely. Now mm-hmm. the only thing I would add to that. Is I would use that more as a guide than letting it something that rules your life. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Because right. ultimately these things are under your control. So because we have been so religified, we usually take these things. Now, don't get me wrong. The uh, the zodiacal influence and planetary influence and solar influence are very uh, very real. It's a very real thing. But uh, we've given up in terms of working with that or working uh, or having an understanding using that as intelligence as opposed to using it as something that rules us. You get what I'm saying? Oh, well, Mercury's in retrograde, so it's my excuse to be stupid. You get what I'm saying? So if you have that mentality, then, then then you have been bitched by these planets. But if you understand that you can control these things, or at very least understand that most human beings will be controlled by them, you get what I'm saying? Uh, you, you're a step up. So, and then I always tell the example of when you come to these zodiacal influences. Jesus, representing the number thirteen, represents um, he has twelve disciples or twelve disciplines because. The idea is to discipline those energies, not to be their bitch. You get what I'm saying? So not to walk around saying, well, Taurus, Taurus can't give it a Pisces, so me and you will never work, baby, that type of shit. It's like, okay, right. I get it. We're going to have conflict, and that's going to so – you, so you work around it. You get what I'm saying? You understand where the conflict comes from. And the idea of it's half animal, uh, uh, most zodiacs are half – well, according to C. Freeman now, they all work. Like, for instance, Libra used to be a mule, but then it just be, uh, and you know how the mule has two packs on the side? Then they eventually got rid of the mule, and then you see the two scales. So basically, it was all the animal versus the higher self. So there was a lower form of Taurus and a higher form of Taurus, a lower form of Pisces and a higher form of Pisces. So when you step up to these higher forms, you supersede the animal side of the game, and therefore eventually become that... 13th zodiac that everyone thinks that exists is just representing the Christ energy, meaning you disciplined the whole 12 and you able to deal and work and control it. So planetary influences are definitely a part of it. Star influence, light, 
I mean, it's all about light, and they all radiate light and the frequency, sound, and all the rest of that. So it's going to influence you. Um, I, I think as when you start saying I'm conscious and I'm a god and I'm a goddess, that you, you use that influence instead of being bitched by it. You know what I mean? And you'll see that concept in when you read the uh, Kabbalion or the Lords of Tahuti. They'll explain to you in the Kabbalion that this is the this is the law, but real masters uh, neutral, try to neutralize. Let's say this is the law of rhythm. They're telling you there's going to be an ebb and flow. You can't annul that. You can't stop. What what goes up will come down. A swing to the right is a measure of the swing to the left. They said there's no way to stop that. But the master hermetic, hermeticist, he tries to neutralize and polarize himself into the balance he wants. Uh, or into the place he wants to rest. You get what I'm saying? So you're trying to stay up, in other words, longer than you swing to the left. And there's a there's a scientific way to do that by neutralizing it mentally, neutralizing that, that, that pull, but you can't get you can't avoid it. So the idea is is telling you that this is the rule, this is the law of Tahuti, but your job as an occultist, your job as an alchemist, your job as a hermeticist is to neutralize and overcome these rules of this matrix. You get what I'm saying? And again, that was the story of the matrix. You get what I'm saying? To, to, these are the rules of the matrix, but these rules can be changed. So the whole idea, of course, there's planetary influence, but you, you want to understand and know what it means, primarily for me, what it means to other folks and, and why it is I feel and act a certain way but my job to be conscious of it and supersede it. Don't be don't be just a slave to it and go, Oh well, there's nothing I can do. Mercury right. in retrograde. Or Pisces is in conjunct with such and such and such and such. You know what I'm saying? But not it's like you're not ignoring the zodiac. You're just not being bitched by it. Mm-hmm. But definitely and you know what, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. And you know what's funny too, Brother Pank? It's funny that people uh, astrologists can say that or uh, people who, you know, still have that vicarious atonement type of mentality, right? It's mm-hmm. funny that it's funny that they can know about the seven chakras and understand that the seven chakras are in their body, but they they know that the seven ca- chakras are under their control. But why right. is that that why is it that that information is not incorporated into the planets, which is the same concept? Um because they See, uh, even the chakras have, in most of these concepts, have a cosmic uh, uh, a reality and a physical reality called the microcosm and the macrocosm. Cosm. So the, the chakras and the energy in you, what you're trying to do is cultivate it in you, then you can, can connect or control or manipulate or interface with the cosmic version of the same energy. But because we're so religified, the cosmic version looks like it's something outside of your grasp, while the inner version is something based upon your ego. You have now said, I can control my chakras, my kundalini, my this, my that, because you don't respect it as something that's connected cosmically. For the most part, we, we, we talk the dialogue, but we really don't respect it as something that's connected cosmically. Because if we did, we'll be able to have a more mentality that we have an impact over the cosmos. Even though the first law to who he said the mind is all in the um, uh, uh, the all is mind and the mind is all and however the line goes, which is basically it's telling you the, un- it says the universe is mental. The universe is mental. So basically, it's telling you everything's from your mind, and um, to master your mind is to master the universe. You get what I'm saying? But because we've been religified and thinking something else is outside of us, um, we really don't have a healthy respect for the fact that we this uh, this illusionary universe is only something that we need to master within. So we spend thousands of dollars going to fucking Cambodia, Egypt, mm-hmm. Angkor yeah. Wat, wherever we go, but we won't we won't go in for free. You get what I'm saying? For absolutely free, we need to go into this inner work. That's what I teach in class. That's what meditation it is. That's uh, that's what Aline teaches during meditation, how to journey within, because really all you need to do is master the mind. 
and then you have mastered it all. You have mastered magic, the universe, all answers. All answers are from within. Like I said, because we have grown into a uh, uh, the way we've been raised in terms of learning, it put us in a dependency for some form of books. So we do need to satisfy some form of logic, but that should be looked upon as step one. See, I, and, and I see this bullshit excuse, right? And I'm starting to talk about it last week because I'll curse and talk and relate to more of a hip hop people. Uh, Older scholars don't think I'm well studied, but then when I start dropping books and shit on them, it's like, well, books aren't everything. You need to practice. But then I fuck them up because I show them deep practice shit as well. You get what I'm saying? So you need to be balanced in terms of your little logic and your scholarly pursuit, and then also you need to be your hands need to get dirty because you need to have a firsthand experience with a lot of the stuff that you're reading. You get what I'm saying? And you have to be able to interpret what planetary, let's just say planetary influence or chakra influence means to you, not what it, we're, we're too busy looking for general answers. And one of the earliest things I read in the occult that, that the whole idea is you're supposed to grasp it under your, uh, the way you're supposed to see it. You get what I'm saying? Because you're not dealing with the same concept of right and wrong, that you're, you're not trying to come to one uh, uh, one idea of the fire hydrant is red or the fire hydrant should be green. You get what I'm saying? No one's coming with a unified idea. It should be what it means to you because you're here to interpret it yourself. So that to say they people cannot, um, people have not gone within deep enough to, to feel the real connection between them and the cosmic forces even though they feel it, they can't describe it, they can't master it because they still see it as something bigger than the, and outside of them. Mm-hmm. So, so, so all of that to say, when what, what I do is when people talk about it, they still talk about it in the same context they learned about God, something that's outside, something that's either going to come and save them once this date comes or when this is con- in conjunct with that. When Pluto turns to your Venus, you better watch the fuck out. You know what I'm saying? That's all. That's all, that's just another way of saying when Jesus gets here, it's gonna be on. You know what I'm saying? It's just a new. So, so it's just a long way of saying that. That's just based upon learning and training. You get what I'm saying? Not really nothing spiritual. That's just training. So people have to be trained out of that mentality to realize it's nothing but their own mind and have faith in that. So that, that's always been the hardest thing. Getting the information is, is not really that hard. How hard is it to get a book and read about chakras? You know what I mean? That Or, or Zodiac. That That's not hard at all. What's hard is to, to, to harness a mentality where it serves you greater than just you're able to repeat some shit. Because yeah. really, that's all you got. Really, that's all you got. There's a sister of I mean, There's a sister Tiana who who uh, bought a Kali statue, and you know you know her regular people are asking her, well, what does that mean? And that's this. And that. So she's like, well, is this is that? So somebody came and wrote a long explanation about some shit from a book. Oh, is this is that the other? But I'm sitting there going, if you really ask them now, what does that mean? That's where it would end. You get what I'm saying? So what I've seen, like I've always seen these people us able to describe consciousness but not really experiencing it. Yeah, which is a big me. which is a big difference. Really big mm-hmm. difference. Oh yeah. You're right, you're right. Oh yeah. Uh well I got one more. It's pretty short. Um I was actually, yeah, I was actually uh talking to a brother, right? And I think he was into the whole uh uh, Nuwabian thing and the Malachi Zio thing, you know, it's not really my whole thing. I'm, I'm you know, independent studies, but uh, mm-hmm. he was talking about, I was talking about uh, me and this whole thing to go back through, you know, a gateway, you call it Sirius, call it Pleiades. Uh, mm-hmm. He didn't have no problem when I said Sirius as the gateway to the you know, realm of the immortals. But he had a problem when I said Pleiades, because I guess the whole uh, rhetoric thing he'd been in, 
But when I said Palladi, mm-hmm. she's probably talking about some white people who came from Palladi and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Well, okay, that, that, that's actually interesting you brought that up um, because when black people made the claim that they were from Sirius, white people had to figure out some shit. So they jumped on the bandwagon and said, well, we're from Palladium. So for years there's been this reputation that black people are from Sirius, these evil Syrians, and then white people from, from Palladium. So yeah. they did it, uh, and they, they have this whole story where in, in, uh, a lot of white people buy into this shit that the Syrians, the Syrians were the reptilians. And, the, you know, just more scared nigger shit. The Syrians were the reptilians, and that the Syrians came down here to dig, and the Palladians are all good, and, you know, they came down here to redeem Earth. And once they get the Syrians off, and the, or the Syrians have this realization that they were doing wrong, that that uh, Earth will join the Federation of Palladian Star Systems. This is a whole bunch of bullshit. And that, this was old mm-hmm. this is old propaganda yeah. bullshit. This is old propaganda bullshit. And sorry to say, in the Nuwabian thing, when they were writing those books, they were taking a lot of occult information that was old, Zachariah stitching shit and shit mm-hmm. that was outdated. Shit yeah. that was uh, shit that was proven to be uh, shit that was proven to be false, yeah. proven to be propaganda, and they kept they kind of was writing on that, and they wasn't writing the updated version of this shit. So there's Kuan Yin, there's a white lady named Kuan Yin who has these channels who promotes that as well. Now some of the shit she's got is good in his real channels, but she's going on this evil Atlantean fell because of the Syrians. And the Palladies people, long shit. Now, when I got contacted from Palladies, nigga said, oh, no panic. You used to party there and get pussy. I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. And he said, actually, you were asked, you was in Palladies when you were asked to come to Earth on a planet called Era. And oddly enough, this was told to me by Ella Fitzgerald. And um, there was like five other things that lined up, the bird, uh, bird tribes, she kept telling me about these bird tribes, and then this bird tribes from Palladies. There's seven stars. There's seven stars that half thought this nigga shit, you know what I'm saying, which is the Palladies. The Reaches came through. They said they're from Palladies. Um, when I was dealing with Palladies, I went through a lot of channels at the time, which I actually forgot. But uh, white folks do not have a cosmic origin. That's it. They don't have a cosmic origin. They were born... On Earth in a cave, yeah. by the priesthood of Yahoo, Yahoo yeah. built out of our DNA. The end. There's no cosmic. They see. Think of how sick that would have to be. They're from Palladies. Who built? If you're God, how how did they get to Palladies? Who who is what is their origin in the? What is their cosmic origin that you would do that? You get what I'm saying? And if they had this power, like my boy Tef used to say, well, if there was aliens and they had this power, if they was black, they would have came and rescued our ass by now. And if they was white, they would have destroyed our ass by now. Of course. You know they would have destroyed our ass by now. So all of this to say, it, it just doesn't make no sense when you follow it through. But because we have been trying so hard to make an adversary, once we learned about the devil as the adversary, we always had to make the white, um, with, to, to his luck, to his good, to, to his good luck, make him this big adversary. So once it got played out to call him, from calling him the devil, and we started saying, well, we're from Sirius, we have a cosmic origin. They had to keep up. You get what I'm saying? They had to keep up. So they just became Palladians. It's all fantasy, and it's all old propaganda that has an has an a Zachariah Stitchin uh, origin, I believe, and it might be some some other folks, but I know Zachariah Stitchin was good with the reptilians and this fantasistic shit because he was paid to do this. That's where this comes from, this this reptilian stuff, an, an invention, total invention. There's nothing old on that. And basically it was, it's still trying to say it was black folks that destroyed Atlantis. Now, 
This is interesting. Frank Joseph is a white. I don't know if his his, his mm-hmm. title could be historian, but he did one a uh, uh, myth or reality Lemuria something something like that. Right. He was and the editor of ancient, ancient um American magazine. Mm, okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. And right. I know he has that. Uh, okay, the ancient American marriage. Okay. Okay, that makes more sense too. And he had that little lecture. And right. uh, but you know he was going very hard at saying in Atlantis they were finding what looked like white people the, that template because you know we're we Lucy's the oldest hoe on the planet and her hair was nappy and uh, you know what I'm saying he's like no there was the template the Tessa something real and he said well you got to remember first and foremost the black woman has all DNA in existence in her. Exactly. So what they're calling, what, if I looked at my sister's arm, who's like, if I looked at Khadija's leg without seeing her skin, she looks, she has very fair skin. You get what I'm saying? Only when you see her eyes and her lips and her hands and all the rest of that stuff. But if you just isolated her skin, you get what I'm saying? You, uh, you would say that. And there's plenty of w- women that has that same black woman who have that same white frame, if you will. So I'm like, he's like, well, the, her DNA could be anything. So, so they've been trying to put. Really, all you have is them trying to give themselves a history. They've been trying to get. See, like, like for instance, they've been selling you this Helena Troy story, as if it's, if it's fucking history. But if you read the Ramayana, that's where the shit comes from. And then if you, and then even before that, Tara gets kidnapped by the Moon God. Before they were women, they were men. Soma, and they send armies to go rescue Tara. Then later on, Sita gets uh, captured by Ravana, and Lakshmana and the Monkey King, Hanuman, and, 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 the, and the whole monkey army comes to rescue her. And then later on, it becomes Helena Troy gets kidnapped, and then they come in, and then this whole army comes to rescue her, but they present it to you like this shit really happened. Mm-hmm. They've been doing their hardest to try to give themselves a history because they really have none. You get what I'm saying? They really have none. So so that's this old hat. You know what I'm saying? They're from Pallades. We're from Syria. No such a thing. All this shit is nigger row shit. Every, mm-hmm. Everywhere you turn is a nigger. Everywhere you turn is a nigger. I very rarely have I seen white people even in the astral world? And usually when I see them, those were the ones that were really doing shit for niggas. Some nigga rescued them. You get what I'm saying? Exactly. But just a standard, standalone white person doesn't exist. Doesn't Hell exist. No. There's mm-hmm. a movie, and they showed that shit in a movie called Sublime with um, Lawrence Hilton Jacobs. Uh, the nigga from Cooley High, you know what I'm saying? Coaches, all grown up. And when I tell you this nigga put it down, they showed white this white man going to the hospital and basically uh, the hospital fucking him up. Which in the uh, DVD when commentary, the fucking he was talking and saying this shit really happens more than often. Motherfuckers go to the hospital get these incorrect surgeries. He said the doctors took a year off on strike. He said, motherfuckers started living and shit. He said, these niggas is killing them. He's dropping all of this shit. But the dude just kept going in the spirit world when he kept seeing Lawrence Hilton Jacobs. And I won't give away the rest, but they showed you the black man runs, runs that shit. And they really saying, when they say the black man, they saying the black woman. They saying, this is our world. They, they saying they, they, mastered, they mastered for a little bit of time this little world, but it don't matter. This is the illusionary world. When, he, when that nigga went to the world of the real, you see what the niggas was doing in terms of payback, Lawrence. And you should see the shit he said to him. I couldn't believe that shit was coming out of the niggas' mouth on TV. Sublime. You got it was on Netflix. It was on Netflix. So uh, you should, should you should still be able to see it on Netflix. Now, and they showed you who really runs this. Now, in all the spiritual work I've ever done, there's nothing, nothing in the spirit world, and I've tried my ass off, that talks about the Illuminati, that talks about chemtrails, 
that talks about vaccines as a threat. The only threat, they said, and they said it's not really even a threat, they got to keep it going, is actually movies. They said there's a constant stream of mind control. Yeah. He said, that's it. He said, that's the only thing that's really got us constant. And you got to think of how hard they go. There's at least, I'll just say at least three movies that come out every week with mind control in it. That's how much they got to go. And I was, and they told me they will never, all this, they're going to have a blackout and turn this shit off. They will never turn none of this electricity off. Niggas in the dark with a pineal gland doesn't even make sense. It's not even conducive to their cause. They said they must keep your mind occupied, and they're keeping it with the TV, and they're keeping it with uh, movies. But even if your conscious is not working, so all these conscious people tell me, I don't watch TV, that's your prerogative, but if you decide to do it, it wouldn't affect you like it affects the normal guy watching, you know, American Idol or whatever the fuck it is they watch. So that's the only thing they got working. All that other shit ain't working. Ain't working like we think or we be, we believe it's working. Let's just say that. And um, and I believe me, I tried to see what we should be combating. What should we be nervous about? It's fucking nothing. Ain't no death camps coming. They can't do it. They would have did it already. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no. They're gonna do this and put you back in slavery. Nothing. They can't do it. The only thing they got is fear. Exactly. Fear. Yes. That's it. And as long as you buy into it, as long as your mind is occupied by it, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. No. Fear blocks the amygdala gland and, and mm-hmm. starts cortisone and adrenaline constantly rushes in your system when you're in a state of fear. And that blocks pineal activity and cuts you off from the pineal consciousness. The end. The end. Mm-hmm. And what if that's the only goal? What if that's the only goal? What if ain't no goal to lock you up or or or, or stick no shit in you? All they gotta do is do some Tuskegee shit, and then that'll hold you down for the next twenty years. You know what I'm saying? Do some Tuskegee niggas, and you be talking about that shit for the next twenty years. So they ain't even gotta even do that. Keep constantly doing that. They just do it for that time being. You talking about fear here? My fear. And, uh, yeah. Hey, thank you. You're going to Eric. Yeah. 651, Eric Cole, 651, you on the line. Hey, it's Abdul Grundy again, y'all. What's poppin'? Oh, what's yeah, what up, dog? What up, Panic? What up, Aileen? Much love to both of you. What's, what's, up, what's up, brother? Yeah, check this out. Yo, the, 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 the insights you gave me, man, last week, I, 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 I uh, kept that to my I, – I favorited that show. And I replayed that, and I, I did what you said. I purposely, me me being already conscious, but I purposely did things out of the ordinary to gain some right. understanding of new shit. And I did that, and and I, I mean I mean I did it, dude. And it was actually like doing shit for me. Like oh, what yeah. I've been doing so far is uh, I've been um uh, Im- imitating things. Like someone's been guiding me to kind of like mimic and pretend and imitate things. Right. Right. Like imitate body language. And it was saying like, you know, you know, the way you the way you do things with your body makes you feel a certain way and changes who you right. are too. Right. Yeah. And that's, and, you know, Absolutely. which we know because that's why we have mudras, but No, that's some genius shit right there. That alone that alone is powerful within itself. You know what I'm saying? Well actors do it. And and if you hear real actors talk, they'll tell you after certain roles they'll be fucked up. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Keith Ledger died, you know what I'm saying, playing mm-hmm. a leg bop, basically. And so did, uh, 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 what's his name, um, Bruce Lee's son, dressing up in that clown shit, you know what I'm saying? Um, oh, yeah, the, the crow, movie. yeah. Yeah, the crow. Now, I mean, but, you know, that's extreme, but you'll hear a lot of the motherfuckers just really need big-time vacations. Uh, Denzel, after he did Malcolm X, because what they're doing is – so hard mimicking the moves. Will Smith, if you watch Men in Black 2, he's still in Muhammad Ali character. Watch that yeah. shit. Watch Men in Black 2 again, because he just did Muhammad Ali. Nigga still talking like this. <laughs> I'm like, nigga, let it go. Because <laughs> you go so hard into that, into that zone and become it. So, yeah. in fact, that's what acting was 
Shakespearean acting in the first place. And that's why they didn't let women do it. Remember, the men used to play women's roles. It was just turned right. out. Mm-hmm. And, um, and basically they was becoming, that's why they wrote these mythology scripts. And in movies to today, it's still done in mythology format. There's really not much you can do outside of that. So you see, that's why you have what they call stereotypes. The word, if you look at Webster's Dictionary, is synonymous with the word ritual. When they say stereotype, what is it? Ritual is another word for it. Not my guess, Webster's definition of it. Because when they're doing a stereotype, they're doing a ritual. And when they're acting these things out, it's actually happening. So black men in the dress, black men always getting killed, black women always talking that uh, I don't need no man shit, that yeah. same shit that you see over and over again is making it real, is making it real. So acting something out, doing the body gestures, becoming it, they tell you that in speech. Uh, if you have to make a speech, do the gestures of someone you've seen successfully making a speech. Tell you that when you read, when it, early on, this is one of the illest tricks, people who have problems reading. Tef told me this. He said, this is what you tell niggas to do. He said, have pe- read the material that you don't understand, because there's certain books you just, it's hard to grasp. He said, read the shit as if you're reading it like a lecture, like you're teaching somebody the shit. And you're reading it in the context of you knowing it. That's the shit that when I get to them hard shits, I just read it as if I'm reading a lecture. And all of that shit to say, by mimicking something, um, and at the very least in your mind, is how you become it. That's, that's the key. That's one of the foundations to magic or any form of success. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You want to you want to hang with cool motherfuckers? You put on cool pants. You know what right. I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Yeah. You, you I, I got a question. I got a question. Uh-huh. I got a question. I, I've been I've been getting a lot of synchronicity since 2010. Like o- over the course of my life, when I look at uh my whole life, I, I'm getting it. But like I notice with this synchronicity shit for me, man. I, I'm not I'm not you know I'm just saying for me it's like it's just so strong, dude. That I can't. It's almost like with all the fears I have of things going off course in my life, it, it's almost like it can't really. It's really like it can't because the synchronicities are so strong in my life, even when I'm at my at my moments where I'm like, man, I don't know. It's like it's it's putting it in my face again, in my face again, in my face again to remind me, no, nigga, you're on it. You're doing it. And it's like what what is it about a person that makes them get into that, that synchronistic state? Because, like, I've had synchronicities that are, that are, like, just heavy. Like, I was supposed to fail last semester, I thought. And I put a shirt on, and I opened the back tail of my shirt, and the shirt said, we got your back. And then, turns out, I ended up passing. The teacher just fucking passed me, and I was supposed to fail. He said, all right, here you go. I'll let you go. Well, let me tell you, synchronicity means only one thing. That means that is spiritual communication. There's no, there's no other thing. That's what it means, plain and simple. There's no other guess. There's no in-between. What we've been calling synchronicity is something called coincidence, which there is no such thing. So when you synchronize, all you really mean is you synchronize what's your intention with what's happening on the planet. That's what synch- that's what synchronize, and that's what magic is. Magic is nothing more than what's in your mind. Your, the idea in your mind, you're able to make it manifest. And the messages that you get from the spirit world are looked at as prior to our understanding as coincidence. That would be... That would be, uh, coincidence would be the ignorant word to use when you say, well, how do I know it's working? How do I know what's in my mind? I'm controlling uh, the planet, controlling my will or whatever you want to call it with because the coincidences dictate that I'm on the right path. Now, if we, now since we're grown and we understand there's no coincidence, it's called synchronicity. So when you see synchronized, what are you synchronized with? Because listen to the word. To be in sync, you're in sync with what? Well, you're in sync with your thoughts and reality. Because most people who lives are out of control is out of sync. Mm-hmm. Meaning that the lot shit is just happening to them and they can't figure it out and it's not lined up with their thoughts. You know, I want to be a good person, but I keep stabbing this hole. I want to get some pussy, but I'm, my dick is dry. 
You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that means you're not synchronizing with what it is you need. So if you're like, well, I was thinking about fish, and now my wife is cooking fish. I was thinking about these girls, and now there's a thousand. That means my thoughts are synchronized with my reality, which means I'm doing magic, which means I am pulling what it is I need. I am putting myself, as you said, that these positions are mudras. Mudras are nothing but putting yourself in the form of an antenna. An antenna is nothing but tuning into a frequency. So that means getting girls is a frequency, getting money is a frequency, getting success is a frequency, getting jobs is a frequency, getting prosperity in spiritual work is a frequency. So you have to figure out ways to make yourself an antenna to receive these things. And you receive them through your thoughts. So if 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 your thoughts are such and such, and the synchronicity lines up, that means your shit is working. If if your thoughts are such and such, and shit is flopping, that means you you're not thinking correctly and not synchronized with your thoughts, and the world is running your ass, and you're not running the world. You're not a magician. Is it, is it, mm-hmm. yeah. go, go ahead, go ahead. Now, I was going to say, you're not, a, you're not a magician, you're not a god, you're a human being, and you, your life is now the circumstances of what humanity or, or the world or ignorance has to offer you. Exactly. Is, is there a way for a person to become uh, in sync, though? Like a yes. person who is out of sync. Imagine do what you just said, what you just got finished saying. First of all, you shouldn't have to answer that question if you're fucking in sync. If you're saying you're in sync... There's no way for you to have to ask me, well, how does a person become in sync? You do exactly what the fuck you're doing. And, exactly. you, and when yeah, somebody yeah, asks doing you, that. and when somebody asks you, you say, well, this is how I did it. This is how it worked for me. See how it works for you. So what you just got from this telling people was, I've changed my body movements. I have did this. I've done that. You, you just laid out what you've done and told the success story. That's it. Now you yeah. only enhance what you're already working on. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, see, see, we need to understand that our Negro way of natural being, our Negro ideas, need to reign supreme. We're trying to. We have to stop looking for something that we think is greater. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Not saying you're doing it, but usually that's just the standard for Black people. Like there's something greater. There's something else out there. No, it's your Negro self. It's your shit that if you really was left the fuck alone. You would do it. You right. would naturally just know what to do. It's your natural way of being, like breathing. You know what I'm saying? It's that yeah. kind of shit when in, 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 the, in the 90s or the late 80s when they started throwing babies in the water and saying, oh, these little motherfuckers could swim. How the fuck is this happening? <laughs> it's like, well, then they said, oh, well, I guess they've been in the womb, you know, more than they've been out the womb. I guess you know, right. this is their natural state of being. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Right. So, so, so we, we're thinking... But because we're grown up, we think it's something that's complicated. We think it's something that's complex, and it's something you forget. I had to learn to swim again by the time I was 10 or 11 or whatever. You get what I'm saying? When it was something that was natural to you. So all of that to say, if we're left alone and really left to go within ourselves and say, you know something, fuck it, let me try that. You know what I'm saying? Not Let me try what Panic said, what Bobby said. With their only testimonies to what worked for them, but if they if you could say, well, let me, I just try that and it worked for me, you know what I'm saying, and it's working for me, then you'll find you'll find this happens naturally. You get what I'm saying. Most of the people I've ever talked to in my life, when they finally get to some level of success, they always have the same story of uh, they always have the same story of I just said fuck it and did it. Some just said fuck it. I I just said fuck it. I quit and I did it. You know what I'm saying. When they tried to go on their quest, and what the book said is when they never, that's when it's always some half story or when they failed. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Or, or, or minor success. So, no, what you're doing is absolutely working. It's clearly working because you get insurance that say we got your back. What more could you ask for? You know what I'm saying? Exactly. What more could you ask for? Yeah, all right. Peace. Peace. Peace, man. <clears throat> All right, we're going to go to area code 407. Area code 407, you're on the line. Hello? Yes, sir. Peace. Peace. 
Hello? Yeah. Hey, read it. Oh, my bad. <laughs> oh, I just what up, you. Hey, um, I'm glad I got through. Um, well, basically, um, I have a question, and this is in regards to... Uh, um, I know on um, past show you were talking about, like, getting current entities and placing them at work to help you out, and that has worked for me at work. Mm-hmm. Like, you talked about one time, talking about, like, putting Darth Vader and just think and visualize in your mind Darth Vader fighting for you. Okay. And, and, and that works. That really works. And I started, like you said, be a scientist, experiment, come up with different um methodologies of, of doing things. So then I started mm-hmm. just visualizing in my mind, okay, it's Tahuti and thought and Mayat and all these concepts and ideas, mm-hmm. embrace them in myself. So I just started surrounding myself with everything that has to do with Tahuti and thought. Then mm-hmm. I started realizing that I became better at at reports. Um, right. Using reports, algorithm. It just started coming naturally to mm-hmm. the point where, I mean, I, it's just it's just crazy how it just opens, these, your mind just opens and it just comes naturally, just naturally it just starts opening these gates. Um, oh, yeah. However, however um, what I do realize, though, is that I'm in a situation where I see myself and, I, and over the years that I'm where I'm working at, is that I see myself more like a genie where mm-hmm. you can help others get where they need to go. But in the process, mm-hmm. I'm stuck in a certain area where I can go to the, you know, whether it's finance, whether it's attracting something. And and that's what I'm like, why do I keep going back to that same place where I'm like, okay, why does that word genie, genius? And then everybody was telling me, oh, you're genius, you're genius. But then I remember one time you said something about genie being the big gene or genius being the same thing. And then I'm like, okay, well, mm-hmm. Aladdin, and then, you know, we started using decoding stuff. I said, well, Aladdin was supposed to free the genie. Mm-hmm. And then the genie is always into that servitude. So I don't know what is um, you know. Uh, that, that, I, I see what you're saying. Um, well, no, a genie's in servitude to the to. to you, but first of all, a genie's your pineal gland, and your pineal is in servitude to you. You get what I'm saying? Your pineal gland represents that lamp that you rub, um, or or the, or your genius. You get what I'm saying that you're talking about. Um, so so, or the, it represents the, the jinn or the demon or the the jinn is the genius, or the demon or the Danian means genius as well. So it's the same thing. Now, um, the idea is if you keep running to the genie, is because all the stuff you've been doing led you to under, you need to understand and study the, the jinn and what jinn is and, and how to access the jinn. You get what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. in, in the same visualizations you've been doing with Tahuti, Dog Vader, and all of that, you may need to to visualize the genie figure and keep going. See, what's clear is you've been shown that the visualizations work for you. So then I should should not hear from you that you need this or you need that. Visualize whatever fucking deity you need to get you out of whatever slump you need. You get what I'm saying? So if you're having a problem in a certain area, but you, you've seen if you dealt with Tehuti, your shit got up, then you need to find a deity that's going to help you financially if that's what you need. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Same thing. Use the same process. Wear that shit till the wheels come off. And you're and the best thing about it is you're being told where to go next. How much have you studied the genie? Um, well, it started as, you know, like when I was younger and, and I started seeing, you know, the Aladdin whole stuff and then, one thing led to the other, and then studying sir nope. and, and right and right now, things. how how studied are you on genies right now? Not much, only that you know the concept. That's of, the issue. That's the issue. Go get into it. There's nothing to stop you. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, 
I would say in consciousness, one of the biggest things uh, to look out for is once you fi- find a niche, once you find mm-hmm. a way in, and clearly you said the Darth Vader thing was something you felt successful with. So much so it led you to dealing with Tahuti and Mayat that way, and it brought you to the next level. Once you found that niche, then you find it. You've been to- you're being told where to go next. Your spirit is telling you, okay, do that next, do that next. Now, you need to understand, by visualizing and doing these things, you become those gods. You understand that? You become those gods. So by dealing with these gods, you actually become yeah. coming. You're not Busy. accessing Darth Vader. You're, okay, you're not I'll accessing you Darth Vader. You're not accessing Darth Vader. You are becoming Darth Vader. And you got to remember, Darth Vader is nothing but Osiris. It's your black energy. The, the mm-hmm. creation of Darth Vader right. is trying to describe the black man. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So you're mm-hmm. taking it back. What he did was illustrate something for you, and now mm-hmm. you have imagery in yourself. You have character within yourself. So mm-hmm. it, 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 while, while they're using your ass, you get to use them back. And you become yeah. that again. You become Tahuti. That's why you're able to understand it, because you're not just fucking with Tahuti. You become Tahuti. That's what being a god is. That's what do you think Bobby's sitting there saying a thousand names for? Yeah, for no, fun? And, 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 and no. He's saying, that, that, it because he's, he's saying it because yeah. what he's invoking is the, mm-hmm. the, the template, the energy that's inside of him. So and that's what I, it's endless in terms of the deity mm-hmm. you can fuck with. And you should yeah. be wanting for nothing. And that's beautiful because, I mean, even even the years that I've been listening to, you know, um, your your and Block Talk Radio, some of the YouTube videos that you have up. Also, when um, Dr. Alin Bay was talking about uh, the Shekinah energy, the Serpentine Fire mm-hmm. energy, which led me to mm-hmm. Shekinah energy, which that led me to Sophia. Mm-hmm. And and I can start as I start relating these different myth, the mythologies in different ancient times. It's like mm-hmm. an archetype, you know. And and, and even mm-hmm. at work when I see. And something arises or something comes in, like a new person at work or something, a situation, I'm able to say, oh, okay. And even in my desk, I started, one time you said, you got to put an owl. I put an owl there to look out for me. Yes. Yes, we're going to say later. Mm-hmm. Um, we started, uh, and, and, and I'm learning that as, you know, it's almost like you said, it's like a muscle. The more you work on it, the more right. you get better at it. Right. And right. you got to put in some time in it. And, uh, for and the other thing, here's my second question, and it's kind of mm-hmm. the, it is a curiosity to me because I started seeing how because I had some people from India that came over where we're at, right? Mm-hmm. And they and he was talking about you know uh, the concept of what nature is and where the word God comes from and God, and mm-hmm. he was telling me about oh okay you guys have God. Or you talk about God, generator, originator, destroyer. I explained because I used to hear you guys say that, and he was like, "Oh, we we got the same concept. Like we call Brahma." And then he was talking about how oh, they have these different entities. It's just a different system, but at the end of the day, it's almost the same thing. It's almost the same mm-hmm. thing. And and then even like when I started looking at the way they draw, I mean the way they portray it on the internet, like they put the gods over there, like the divas in the color blue. I was there like, you know, it's kind of weird because then even in Dragon Ball Z, they have the the guy that, that has the turban, Mr. Popo, he's black. But now in the new version, they're putting him in the color blue. So I, well, I don't know blue, why well, I have in my blue, heart. Blue. It's like blue is black. But, well, blue you know, is like melanin. Dark blue. Blue, blue, re- blue represents melanin. When I did, I broke all of that down with Krishna and Avatar. Krishna. That's why they was blue. And in Africa, there's blue black people, which is a which is a representation of, of deep melanin, and mm-hmm. um, so so that blue black eventually became these gods. They mm-hmm. told my niggas, they just painted yeah. them blue, but they told my niggas blue black niggas, and um, and Krishna is the main blue one because they thought Krishna is melanin. He's Christ, Christios energy, melanin. Um, no, it's all the same thing. You get what I'm saying? There's yeah. no doubt about that. You know, you, you, you could have a thousand different names, but uh, that that's one of the things we talked about today about uh, correspondence. That's one of the biggest words I use in my class is correspondence. 
because that's that's the shit that's going to be able to save your ass. When you're able to deal with all of this information and bring it down to a common denominator, first and foremost, all the, the multitude of information that you learn becomes smaller. And when it becomes smaller, you're able to grasp it more. And you, you re- then you're, a- and you're also able to see an agenda within all of this information. And it's that same. And really, when it comes down to it, it's only two things: how you got here and how the fuck you get out. That's it. That's exactly and, what I'm just trying to like. Melanin, how do we get out? Melanin, yeah. Kundalini, this, this, this. You got dumb being a human, and then you get enlightened, going beyond humanity, graduating yeah. from humanity. That's it. That's all that's fucking happening. Kundalini energy is everywhere. Chakras in some sort of way is everywhere. Melanin is coded and in everything. They just don't say the word melanin because once you say melanin, the nigga jig is up. But they got yeah, about they a thousand different then, names for melanin. But even when, I mean, yeah. mm-hmm. like I, I'm, I'm from, I'm, I'm not originally from the state. I, I, I was born in Nicaragua, Managua. Right, uh-huh. and then oh, right, I mean, man, my dad is is dark skin, my mom is like yellow skin, and mm-hmm. then um, over when we came to the states, right, uh, we we came to Miami and everything. Um, and over there, I, I came here when I was six years old. But even in school over there in Managua, Nicaragua, they taught us in school that the first ones to be in Central America were the Olmecs. But when I oh. came over here to the states. Mm. I was like, I came here to second grade. They're like, oh no, I was like, I was like, no, hey, um, but in my country they say the Omics were the first. And why are you guys saying Aztecs? And they get into different things, right. and that that I left that behind as I grew. But then it came right. back and resonated back to me when I came into the conscious uh, thing. And it was just, it was funny because I was just, I was about seventeen or something, and then I was looking into. You uh, Pokemon and then going into Yu-Gi-Oh and then I, I, I watched a video on YouTube and then I'm like, hold up, all this, you know. And I saw that Richard Pryor uh, video mm-hmm. and then I, I realized that when I came here, it, it's it's a whole different like what they teach you in school here. Totally different. different than, yeah, and then even that's why Dark Vader will resonate with me because of the black and red being re, being coming to Nicaragua. Uh, the Freddy Cougar stuff, black and red, and I started seeing black and red everywhere. Papa, mm-hmm. and then you know when you start talking about Papa Legba and all that, right, and I'm like, right. wow, these are energy, these are entities. This is all comes back to black, and that's when I just started waking up, and then I realized I was like, you know, you know, it was just mm-hmm. it, it teaches you, you know, you, you you look at things from a different perspective, and even I started looking at the sky different when I go night. I tell tell my wife, look at the sky, look how black it is, look how dark it is. You even see that dark blue and you see these little right. speckles of light. How can how can we say that that light travels faster? No, darkness consumes it. So if right. anything, the originator, the first thing has to be darkness. It cannot be light. Light was born out of darkness. Mm-hmm. Even in the book of Genesis it says, Let there be light. In other words, before light was sound and darkness. That's when I started looking at the whole world from a different perspective. Well, in 2001, they mapped the composition of the universe, and they found 73%, 76%, I believe, dark matter, and 23%, uh, 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 no, I'm sorry, they found 73% dark energy and 23% dark matter. And all that light that you see is only a line of 4%. So light is definitely a... A, a subtle reaction to true dark energy and dark matter. And I mean, that's clear. I mean, you know, there, there's no even guessing. It's almost not even worth saying that. So the dark mother and the dark father um, mm-hmm. is before any of that thing. And, and even the and even the the light just represents a transformation process. Horus, the sun, just represents a transformation process to the redemption mm-hmm. of the mother and the father. Yeah. So yes, indeed, brother. You know, oh yes, and and I really appreciate all, everything that you guys do, uh, Doctor Anime. Oh, yeah. I thank you for your shows. I thank you for. Um, I, I remember one time when I was talking about Shakina, you emailed me back on Facebook and explained to me what the Shakina energy uh, and all that was. And Billy Panic, as always, thank you for for coming true. Yeah. Yeah. Everything that you guys do resonates. Uh, 
even when one time you you broke down about Darth Vader, that that was like the father going back to the son saying, "This is oh, me." Yeah. Yeah. I, I I resonate that with my father. I re- and and then it yeah. hurts because I mean, when you're born in the, in my country, things are different. But when you come here, you start seeing the separation of racism and everything, and how yeah. it tries to divide yeah. you. Yeah. Well, but that's then, that's the know, program. You know. That's yeah, and and then I started, you know, upli- that's why I uplift my father. I uplift everything that sometimes the program here is show to to degrade you. And but now, you know, I I want to make sure that my children learn and break free from this program, and and don't right. fall into to this whole thing that where you know separation of itself and 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 honor that which is originally first. You know? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'll let it. Thanks. I'll let it. I'll end the okay. call and just thank, thank, thanks for everything you guys do. No doubt, bro. Peace. 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 Let's get this stuff out the way. Um, now, y'all know I got the classes going on. We just finished up last week, so soon we're gonna start. So now is the time to get in. We're about to start a new session, so get on it now. These classes is popping. So uh, this is where you want to be at. Um, if you if you don't know, there are four weeks. Uh, you don't during the weekend. You either you either pick Saturday or Sunday. You have that choice. Um, we will uh, we do about four weeks. Uh, we do it via Skype. If you're in uh, the Atlanta area, you can come by the crib as long as you don't sound weird. But uh, you do a video, Scott. I got people in UK, all across the country, who've been taking this class. Now this class has been changing lives. You don't have to take my word for it. The people who've taken the class have offered their emails, and you can email people who've taken the class and hear directly from people who've taken the class to see if it's worth it. And I believe you me, it's probably one of the best things you could do for someone who's truly, truly wants to uh, deal with their their little conscious change so you need to get it on we're going to start in a few weeks there's a few people who paid already so we're about to get it on and it's going to be on so now is the time to get in and of course i have the herb packs i know there's a few people i owe some to but they all packed and i'm they're going out this week and other than that is uh, uh cds spiritual baths I'm doing the deity readings. A lot of people have been asking for the readings. We do those via Skype. I record those so you'll be able to refer to it, tell you what angels, what deities, what demons, what days, what plants, what flowers, what perfumes, all the shit around you that you can access as templates, as as uh, scents and, and gods and angels and all of these things that you can use in your Transformation. So it's a God force deity reading. You want that in your life as well. But I'm trying to tell you, you need to get in these classes. The best thing you got going on. Uh, one of the things I do recommend you also get is Oregon. You don't know what Oregon is? Look it up. And I've been telling you that you can get it from a brother, a brother named Jerry Miller. Um, contact me, panicpack at hotmail.com. And I'll be more than happy to pass on Jerry's information. Uh, I usually give his email because I only want serious inquiries only. I don't want a whole bunch of people just emailing them, asking them what it is. You need to find out and understand what it is before you even email him. And it's probably some of the best stuff you can have in your house um, for your strength, for health, for uh, consciousness, kundalini, you you name it, Orgon seems to do it. Jerry will explain, and you'll be able to see plenty of pictures that he has of his work. That's Jerry Miller on Facebook, and if you need his info, inf- hit me at panicpack at hotmail.com. Um, so remember, herb packs, CDs, all of that stuff is available. Hit me, panicpack at hotmail.com. If you haven't had a list, from me, you need an updated list to see what I got going on, what's going on. But you really want to find out about those classes. Ask me about those classes, and I'll send them off. And, of course, as always, you need to see DrLeanLBay.com. 
he has plenty of items, but one of the stuff I believe everyone should get because I'm always asked about stones, chakra stones. And he has a chakra stone package where you get the seven stones for all your chakras. Remember, chakra balancing is key to kundalini enlightenment. So that's something you want if you're having a hard time getting it. You get it at a one-stop shopping deal at a lean bay, drleanbay.com. Not to mention he has plenty of other shit, candles, and all sorts of stuff that I'm sure he'll be able to help you with. Just reach out to him. And like I said, classes are starting now. You don't want to miss this shit. You know what I'm saying? Let's get it on. And and mind you, let me tell you the process. Once you uh, pay, you need to give me your number so I can call you for class. If you don't pick up or give me your number, you're going to miss the session, and don't be mad at me. So once you pay, just make sure you send me a your phone number, and that will put you on the list so you can get a call so I can give you the instructions when class time starts, which is soon. So now is the time to do this. All right, so let's get back to the phones, keep it moving and so on and such, and uh, keep, it, keep it going with our discussion, black girls. All right, let's go to area code 313, area code 313, you're on the line. <laughs> hey. What's going hey. on? Hey, Brother Elaine, peace, Brother L, hey. peace, Brother hey. Panic, this is Tiffany from Detroit. Calling in like too. And look, why you why you say the last line when when I'm calling in about the black girl? But the I, I am calling. You. She's the original black girl. <laughs> She's I am the calling to. Black girl. <laughs> black I am girl. calling to plug the class because I have no questions. Simply because I've taken the class, and when I tell you this class has changed my life. I mean every word of that. Um, I'm telling you, if y'all are really serious about going to the next level, take the class. I haven't taken anybody's class since I was in high school. I'll let you, girl. This class has changed my life, and I am so very grateful. Everything Panic says he will do, he will do. Everything he says he is is an understatement. He said, and, and then some, and I just appreciate him from the bottom of my heart. Um, everything he has done, everything he has said. And I know I speak for a lot of people who ain't even, you know, who, who haven't, you know, um, called in and said anything, who probably just answered through the email, this will change your life forever. Um, that's all I wanted to say. I love y'all as usual. Um, peace and blessings. Wow. wow. Tiffany Messenger broke it down. Yeah. Hold on. We got to give her info. Let me see. Tiffany Messenger, T I F F A N N I M E S S E R, well, E N G G E R, at yahoo.com. Tiffany Messenger. She's the one correct. who sent me the, uh, the the crochet stuff. Is it technically, technically called crochet stuff? Yes, yes. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> it is hooked the fuck up. She sent me like a confusion. She's the one who called in. And said, I'm going to send you some stuff. I'm like, I don't wear Rasta hats. So she sent it to Khadib, but I was surprised it was off the hook. It almost made me feel like growing some dreads. But then she showed me her uh, her website. And she, got, she got a nice little hat collection, nice little thing she's making. I told her, see, I'm a real simple Negro. Earrings, yes, the earrings, the bags, you checked her out. And um, like I said, I'll put a link up on my Facebook page. Y'all email me if y'all ain't get Tiffany Messenger, T-I-F-F-A-N-N-I, word messenger at Yahoo. If y'all having a problem contacting her, contact me, panicpack at hotmail.com, and I'll send you the link to her pictures off the chain. It's kind of surprising because I'm not a crochet dude, but, like, she got a couple of hats <laughs> on there that was, like, really, like, Look, she look professional. Didn't look like you know that shit from you know the you know the seventies, <laughs> like you know how the, how the big yarn hats and shit. You know what I'm saying? She didn't have them Applejack joints. She had some like real official <laughs> shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, I'm gonna walk around looking like you know what I'm saying, dancing machine or some shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I'm like, nah, she she did her shit. So I'm sitting there going, this is like real professional. 
So me, I'm a simple nigga. I said, look, all you do, all you gotta do is make me a blanket, and because I'm like a granny nigga. I be sitting in front of the TV with, with a blanket on and some tea. Granny. Yeah, oh, I'm a straight granny nigga. They be walking around like, look, motherfucker, we need to turn the AC on. I'm like, no, we don't. <laughs> nigga, I, this, shit is, this shit is wrong. Like, I came down here, I was sweating, dumped. my whole chemistry changed when I came, to New, came out here because I was just be down this motherfucker sweating like a pig. I don't even sweat no more. Like, my whole shit just turned to some Atlanta shit. I got a bathrobe on right now. No AC. Oh, this my shit is ridiculous, kid. I have a straight Sopranos robe on right now. Well, I finished the blanket. I, I actually, I finished the blanket today. So, be looking for that package. Oh, yes. I got my girl stuff. Everything will be coming down there soon. Dr. Lee, did your queen get my package? I sent her a package as well. Yes. Yes, she did. And yes. she loved it. I was saying thank you. Oh, Definitely. you are so welcome. She loved it. She loved it. I love y'all. I mean, I, I truly, I said, you know, Patty, no, I say it a lot, but I love y'all. Truly, truly, uh, truly, could truly. Be, she could, she could be just asking for a blanket, too, but she don't make her one. <laughs> I, I'm a, don't make her one. You know what I'm saying? Because she don't never share her blanket. No, nah, you, you know, got I got it. I got to yeah, I got to show love to my girl. You know, whatever she wants, she got. It, it's it's she, it's a uh, Like, see, she got a hot blanket. So as soon as you was like, I can never make a blanket. I was like, oh please, I didn't want to even tell the dude. I just want to bust out my blanket on her. Like boom, and she made like a green one, a green pan with gold. Holy shit, that is fire, nigga. Fire. Well, you know what I'm talking about, girl. Uh, Brother L, you why don't you email me too and let me know if there's something that you would like and I will get that to you. And this is all love. Uh, we all family. We'll and, do. I and I will. I do not mind looking out. But I ain't gonna hold the line because I know a lot of people trying to get in. I love y'all. I love y'all. I love y'all. Peace and blessings. No, she right. stayed on for you. Stayed on for what? Listen, she know. She knew what was coming because she do spoken words. She know what was coming next. <laughs> You know what was coming back. Black girl. <laughs> Black girl. That's what I thought of that shit was. That's Black what I girl. Said, you know, the ball, you play too much. You know who you are, Black girl. <laughs> you know who and you two. are. And Tiffany Goodbye, from Detroit. Damn it. Tiffany from Detroit. You ever see that porn shop show from Detroit? Hardcore porn? Where they sell shit and like everybody from Detroit on the on the porn, like on the eight mile. I'm like, Tiffany, if I see you selling shit at the porn shop <laughs> on the eight mile, oh my goodness. <laughs> like, I don't even watch T V. I'm like, Oh no. black girl. Black girl. Peace and blessings, guys. Love y'all. I'm happy y'all somebody else can get through. <laughs> Peace and love. Tiffany's the truth. <laughs> Tiffany's the truth. I, I like her immediately. And you know what I'm saying? She's one of the people that came right in the heart. What the hell? That's is Tiffany, that? That's Tiffany's theme music. <laughs> that girl. Don't know you know jazz. <laughs> like, I know jazz, black girl. Like she's, she's, she's like a sweetheart. Like, uh, if you remember, she, she actually called me into the show and was like, hey, I'm going to send you some stuff up. You know, people say that all the time. She said right. a crispy UPS box with a bunch of stuff for the media, just from the from the kindness of her heart. No other reason, just like saying thank you. So you know, and then she took and then she took the class. So I'm like, ain't that something? So you know, I'm gonna send her some herbs and all the rest of that stuff. But like, to my surprise, her her stuff was like really some tight shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, uh, you know, you know, I think people should take a look because it's surprisingly tight. You know, you know, I thought it would be some old, you know, like, come on now, I ain't walking around here. You know, you, you, th- th- those 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 uh, knitted shirts never work out good. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I'm going to do wear a shawl or some shit. So, like, uh, so then, but I seen it, I was like, oh, this shit looks like it's, like, real store-bought shit. So... So, you know, I, I urge people to look and see what she got. You know what I'm saying? Real good people. Black girl. <laughs> Do you know who you are? 
You are a butterfly. A butterfly. <laughs> You go to area code seven eight six. Area code seven eight six. You on the line? Huh? Peace. 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 Okay. Seven eight six. Seven eight six. On the line. Peace. Hello. Hello. Yes. Peace. Can you hear me? Yeah, yes, clear. Oh yeah, uh, peace, peace. Yeah, um, I'm calling uh, from Miami. Uh, I have a question, and yes, uh, bas- yeah, so I was, uh, basically dealing uh, with my uh, my uh, spiritual practice, uh, dealing uh, with uh, the, my uh, yoga practice. Uh, basically, I've been uh, doing yoga for about five years, like uh, asanas and, uh, and meditation. Uh, the first three years, I used to do a lot of meditation, and it helped me with the the, the asanas, the the stretching. Uh, but two years ago, I had to stop meditating because of my schedule. I had to start working a lot. So for two years, I haven't been able to meditate, and I just do the asanas. But uh, it seems that since I stopped meditating, I'm not able to do the asanas uh, well anymore. You know, because it's like a, it's kind of like a dance. You know, like you're doing the the dance of the snake, but it's like if you don't do the meditation, you don't do the the postures right. And so I've been like um, kind of injuring myself with the asanas, you know, but I really don't have time to meditate, so I'm kind of caught up in that situation. So I was trying to ask to see, uh, you know, what I could do, uh, you know, anything, uh, any rituals or maybe tap into some deity energies that might help me with my yoga practice, you know, with the problems that I'm having right now. Oh, that's something I don't do. All right. I couldn't help, I couldn't help you there. Like, uh, I would say then right. if, if that's the case, you may need to meditate and do whatever you – whatever was working, do whatever works. So yeah, that, working, that was it. There's no shortcut. And um, I yeah, haven't I heard of a deity that's going to help meditate. You know what I'm saying? Um, but, you know, I, I mean, I'm sure there is one. And – um. But I think that's a bit extreme. For me, my mentality is if I'm going to deal with a deity, I kind of want something uh, great out of it. With meditation and yoga, it sounds like it's just something you do with your body and your focus. You, you get what I'm saying? Not to say right, right. It's, part, it's not to say it's out of the rules to use a deity, but it seems a bit extreme, especially when you were when you already know the path that worked for you. You know what I mean? If it's important, I would say make some time and do whatever you need to do to do that right or deal with someone who who uh, who deals with it. You see a hotel, you get what I'm saying? I would, right. uh, he's online and he's very he's very uh, personable. So if you send him an email, Brother Wayne Chandler, and I'm not sure how far Lean deals with the yoga. Yes, yeah, so I, I deal with, with Kutalini yoga. I deal with right. Kutalini yoga. And um, I would tell you this, Brother, um, you would want to learn on um, Wei Gong, which is a form of Qi Gong in which that deals with sitting meditation in which that deals with the circulation of what is called the micro and the macro cosmic orbit technique. Mm-hmm. Um, my teacher, Sun Yada says Swati and uh, one of the another Tibetan um, students, uh, now a master um, by the name of Mantak Chia. Um, you might want to check them out. Um, Master Sanyata book is Jewel Notice. You definitely want to practice those exercises in there. He deals with the asadas, um, but you can actually do what's called Wei Gong, in which that deals with sitting meditations, in which that you don't even have to do any moving. Everything in which that is moving within you, which is the Shakti force energy known as the Kundalini. Um, the magnetic energy is also moving through your body and through your various organs to regenerate you without even having to do any movement at all. So you might want to learn those techniques right now. And um that's the and that's the spirit in which that you'd be calling on, Shakina. So Sophia or Sophia, uh, who is also referred to as Kundalini. Um also Ama. That is her other name within the Dogon is Ama. Um, or Amenta within ancient Kemetic or Amen Rayet. Um, 
also known as Arset, Isis. All of that is the mother goddess mm-hmm. principle, which is that's what you would be calling upon is the Kundalini. All right? So that's what you would do. Oh, all right, all right. All right, I'll look into that then. All right, brother. All right, thanks. All right, let's go to area code 301. Area code 301, you're on the line. Peace. Peace. Yeah, zero one three zero one. You on the line? All right, we're gonna go to area code four zero four. Area code four zero four. You on the line? Peace. Peace. All right, area code five six one. Area code five six one. You on the line? Yes, fellas. Hi, this is yeah, Willie Crystal. Yes, this is Will, and I'm calling from Palm Beach, Florida. Well, and I have me, a bro. question for Panic. Now, this is my question, Panic, and, and it may not be nothing really spiritual, but the problem with me is that. I have a speech impediment. I have been stuttering all my life, and I wanted mm-hmm. to know if there was something spiritual about that, or or is there something spiritual dealing with with um, stuttering and dopamine in the speech impediment? Not that I've heard of, but um, uh, I mean, if you're trying to get over it, I mean, yes, I am. physical ways. There's physical ways to do that. You know what I'm saying? There's therapies and all that. To do that. I was just looking into that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you can find a spirit to do anything, but, you know, honestly, that's never been a problem of mine, so I've never had to look or research for that. Yes, sir. But, um, I mean, it shouldn't stop you. So I would say you should get on a quest to find some sort of deity that deals with the throat or the throat chakra, speaking, you should find all the information you can on the throat chakra, and all the find find all the physical and human information you can on stuttering. How bad is the stutter on a scale of one to ten? Well, um, on a scale from one to ten, it's probably a a six. But the thing is, with me, is that I, I I don't stutter when I rap or when I make music or when I sing or when I'm in a really good mood, whether I've been smoking or drinking. You know, he ain't stuttering now, neither. Yeah, I know. It's... Yeah. Yes, sir. Let me tell you. I would say it sounds like, some, I mean, there's plenty of people with speech impediments that, you know, there's ways to do that. But let's say you need something spiritual. I mean, it's just a matter of finding the deity that works with the throat and doing deity work. Do you do you work with deities at all? Yes, I do, I have been doing the the um the ritual with Ligba for the past three three terms in college. I have been using that deity and I do libations before I rap. I get into the zone then, but you know. I would go as far as to say just search hard or something for the throat, something that's blue for the throat. A throat chakra deity. Um and See, it, I, I see it's up to you to find something that you feel that you could use and you could work with and see where it takes you, but it's all in the throat chakra. Other than that, because I haven't dealt with that issue, you get what I'm saying? There's not, there, was, there was nothing for me to ever research or look or even pay attention to that. You, you get what I'm saying? Yes, I do. Since, since you're dealing with the issue, I would say, yeah, Every, there's a deity for every single thing in existence. My hope is that people are using these deities for higher purposes than lower purposes. That sounds like some day. If you're having a problem with your speech, that sounds like something high, something that you need to deal with. It doesn't sound like you're trying to get new wheels on your car. You get what I'm saying? You're trying to find a deity to get a new car is bullshit. So it's, I think it's up to you to search and find one because Really, by you finding them, it tells you that 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 the deity presenting itself to you as you want to work with it. So, right, really, yeah. 
Uh, right, I really would tell became, you this, bro. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. I would I would tell you this, brother, is that the um um my kid or my kid rule, which is the name for um Tahuti, means the divine speaker. So you would yeah. want to tap to Tahuti, you know, <clears throat> or Jehuti as it's called a Thoth, um within the Greek. All right, so you definitely want to tap into Tahuti. Um, of course, his um principles. Um, deals with rhythm, vibration, which is the music aspect also. So all of that correlates. Wow. Great, great, great. Um, guys, I really do appreciate this a lot, man. And I'm fans of both y'all brothers. Y'all keep on doing your thing. And I will be signing up for the video class soon with your parents. Okay. Now, mind you this, too. Keep this in mind, that the throat chakra... There's also a problem in the throat chakra when you study. So how how deep have you studied your chakra system and the throat chakra in between, uh, in particular? I haven't studied these chakras at no point yet. There's this there's look look up your throat chakra, <clears throat> and um, it will tell you a bunch of deities for throat chakras, a bunch of stones you can get for the throat chakras, a bunch of herbs you can get for the throat chakras, a bunch of perfumes you can get for the throat chakras. Worst case, if you can't find it, you have a problem, just email me. I have that. I have a whole throat chakra thing I'm just giving to you. And it will give you a whole bunch of things and techniques you could do to start working with the throat chakra as well. Because I'm going to tell you, you didn't study until I said you should be stuttering, then you started a little bit. So it makes me think of a certain amount of it is psychological, too. And there's got to be if you smoke uh, weed and certain when you're happy, you don't. You get what I'm saying? It's almost like when you forget about it. So that that's a blockage. You know what I'm saying? That might be through trauma. It, it could be through you just built yourself there. It may be something you never just got over. I'm saying, I remember I had a, my cousins, their father used to stutter terribly when he was little, but he was able to get over. He still had a little stutter, but he had to do therapy and all sorts of stuff, and he eventually got rid of it, but he was like a bad stutterer, you know what I mean? So, I mean, yes, there's sir. a way out of that. There's a way out of that, but uh, as as uh, Aline said to Hootie, that's a good deity to deal with, mm-hmm. but I think you should deal with the throat chakra as well, you know what I'm saying? Because uh, you're just talking about add more power. Um, it's it guarantee you, if I remember correctly, I think stuttering is an imbalance in mm-hmm. the in the throat chakra. I believe it is, if I remember correctly, an uh, underactive throat chakra. So you got to put more blue around you, and so on and so forth. And I said, if you can't find enough information, I'll send you. I have a bunch of shit when I was studying that that I could send you. So right. Email me also, oh, right, uh, oh, I was just saying, um, Omo um in the chat room said that um it sounds like you probably need more breath work, um, yoga wow. meditation and that that she can tell that by you taking sips of air it deals with your breathing. It's you mm-hmm. actually holding your breath. So that's what you're trying to gain control over the stuttering aspect. But the thing is, is that you're dealing with the throat chakra, like Brother Panic said. So there's a sound or tone in which that helps activate an underactive throat chakra, all right, which is your thyroid glands and your parathyroid glands, which is attached to your esophagus and your larynx. But the sound is the A sound. A that sound helps with toning your throat chakra. Now, there's herbs that you can take, like iris sea moss, kelp, bladder rack, you know, chickweed. Um, alfalfa, these are herbs in which that helps with strengthening your throat in particular. 
So these yeah. are some things that you can definitely do. Also, slickery elm, marshmallow root, um, or no, more just put in um, slickery elm. Right. So that's those are herbs that, that, that can also help. That, that right, the too. Right, right, right. Yeah, it's right. just a matter of researching. Yeah, I think it's just a matter of you just researching and giving a lot of attention to it. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to feel stuck on that one. You know what I'm saying? There's right. so many routes. There's so many routes you can go. You know what I mean? And like I said, especially for someone, you know, and you'll be more aggressive at finding stuff because it's your issue. You know what I mean? I said, I've never had to deal with this issue. So, so these are just things that kind of makes sense, and the lean deals with it because he deals with meditation more. But uh, you, there's so much stuff you can do. There's herbs, there's, there's uh, aromatherapy, I'm sure. You can f- figure out some stuff on. Like Aleem just told you the A sound, you know what I'm saying? Right, the color um, of sky blue also helps sky you buy blue, the, right. the sky blue right. upon yourself. Imagine sky blue all around you, particularly at the throat chakra. That's also produce yeah. a healing effect and activation of your particular thyroid and parathyroid glands in your throat. Yeah, they should get like blue construction paper, just, just right. glance at it. Um, crystals, anything blue, blue algae and all the rest of that jazz, blue crystalline, put it on the throat chakra, hold it on your person. That's easy. Just put it around your neck area, you know what I mean? Just get some jewelry or whatever. And, you know, you can go on and on for days. There's just so many things you could do. Stop putting blue, you know, you could do a blue light. Go to, like, Lowe's, one of them places, get a blue light, get a little room, maybe in your closet, depending on how you got it set up. Put the blue light in, do the meditations in the, the blue room. I mean, you can go on and on for days. This, this, everything, once you understand the chakra aspect, they're going to tell you the sounds for the chakra, like he said, the A, you can buy uh, music uh, in, uh, you know how in uh, so-called classical music, which is Moorish music, they they play the same song in the key of A, the key of B, the key of C, key of G. Just buy it in the key of A. Classical music and meditate to that in the key of A. And um, hum along with it. You get what I'm saying? So there's so much that uh, humming is another thing that opens up the throat chakra if I remember correctly. It opens up the pineal if you put the tongue on the top, but it also opens up the throat chakra too. Um, there's a lot, you know what I'm saying? You just got to have an army of tricks to see what works. That's what I think. And like like I said, give it a lean, like he said, because he knows about that stuff for real, for real. Like I said, guys, I really do appreciate it, and I, I'm going to go to lot there during the morning time and definitely try to get some chakra books, and I'm going to definitely try to, I, I'll, I, I am going to try to fix this problem. Okay. Yeah, you will. You'll get it done. Ain't as a matter of just doing it. Um, like I said, yeah. give me an a email, and I'll send you some chakra information that will save you a lot of time. A lot of times, some shit that's that's going to be in my book, I'll just send it to you. But the blue chakra, your blue chakra, <laughs> you'll be straight. No doubt. Peace, yeah. brother. Appreciate Peace, you. Brother, man. Peace. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you for calling First World Order Radio. Every Wednesday night is science night, so be sure to tell friends, everyone, what's going on every Wednesday night here. Blog no Talk Radio, First World Order, Google. And we got area code 832. 832, you're on the line. Tell us where you're calling from and your name. Uh, Houston, Texas. It's Peru. All right. What up, brother? Peace. Peace, peace bro. Peace, bro. Hey, um, I've been listening to you, brother, for some time. And mm-hmm. uh, actually... I was calling to find out if we could collaborate because I have uh, experience in the uh, inner arts as well. Uh, mm-hmm. Quite extensive uh, training as well. So uh, uh, I made a couple of attempts to uh, speak to you guys a couple of times. Maybe you guys are pretty 
busy. I understand that. So uh, you want to give it one good effort, one last effort, see what we can do, get all this information out here because this, you know, you guys have quite a bit of information and, and, and we also have the information. But it would be good to uh, collaborate and get the bulk of the information out. To uh, I'm sorry. Uh, what, what, what were you trying to do, bro? Well, collaborate in terms of uh, in what sharing. context, sir? Yeah, in the context of gong, ne gong, uh, um, uh, internal chi cultivation, and uh, you know many of the arts that we talk about, many arts that you guys are talking about uh, in terms of cultivating and, and development of of our spiritual. In, in 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 a in a corporation, you say? No, collaboration. In collaboration. collaboration. In other words, working. I mean, to do to do eventually do like what through a radio show or something? No, no, no. Through uh, probably uh, you know, I think it's best one of the good things since you guys have uh, your Skype uh, classes going on. Uh, you know, possibly possibly forming a university type. Of, of oh, uh, situation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, I mean, well, 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 I'm usually uh, clear on, and I don't think I'm too far off that out the information that uh, that we bring. You know, I try to try to you know make it so it's for those who seek it, as opposed to aggressively creating a uh, market for it. You get what I'm saying? So in other words, people have to find it. So an elite group of people or a small amount of people should be taking my class as opposed to an abundance. You know, I'm not looking to to teach masses or aggressively go after people who are on the fence. I mean, uh, the only gauge, real gauge I have is people taking their time to uh, to to come up with their little their pennies and saying, well, I, I feel it's worth the investment to do it. And that that's another way of saying they're serious about what I'm going to teach them. So, really, I haven't put much thought to going beyond what I've been doing because uh, the agenda that I have in my mind is conducive to a small crowd. And the lecture okay. circuit is conducive to uh, what, what we got going on here. Okay, okay. So we're not going from here. So I, I'm not looking to necessarily expand because if I was, um, and I spoke on this before, and I lean to bear witness to. I mean, I could just clean up my language and, and say "hotep" and uh, just call them queens a little bit more, and, and then people will accept me in areas where they possibly wouldn't because. Uh, Everyone's looking to politic and network and expand as if this is a business, but that's not my agenda. So I just, okay. so in other words, I just keep it real, keep it dirty, and whoever's supposed to hear this information is going to hear it. You know what I'm saying? So, you okay, know, I, okay. You know, and I'm not trying to shut down anything because if my mother was asking me the same thing, I would have the same answer to my mother. You know what I mean? Okay. Like, no, nah, okay. mom. But I okay, do appreciate, well, I make, I do appreciate the, the uh, you know what I mean, the acknowledgement. Yeah, because, you know, you got about 40 million people just on, on Facebook that, that uh, about 40 million people on Facebook alone that just uh, are uh, are into different arts. Well, you know, yeah. just, the, yeah. the difference would be I'm not interested in their money. I'm interested in waking them up, but they have to wake themselves up. So the only thing I could do, and these are the things I learned from Bobby, from Aline, is you just uh, be as honest as you possibly can. And those who are supposed to resonate with what you're saying will find you. You get what I'm saying? Because they have to be looking. So, I mean, me trying to capture the audience, you know what I mean? That's, you know, that's, that's. That's you know that's not what that's not what this is about. You know what I'm saying a lot of people would be real disappointed if I was that guy. Um, like in terms of money wise, uh, you know all I need is enough to pay the rent, and and you can keep on teaching. You know I try to explain to people you know that uh, actually on my regular job I was making twice as much as I was making the herb packs, and, and there wasn't no question. 
of there was going to be a check. You know what I'm saying? So, this to me yeah. is not a step up, actually. Before anybody knew who Panic was, I was already a $1,000 heir for my job. And prior to all of that, I, I had a porn business and a uh, and I made records all my life. So getting money, getting attention, you know what I mean? That's that's. Well, I mean, the, the issue the issue of greed wasn't in my thinking. The issue of of uh, the, the the issue of enlightenment was in my thinking. And yeah, well, making it well, with that, to with that, like people can't, that speaking that. Yeah, with that, even that comes down to some enlightenment. People have to to actually seek it. You have to seek enlightenment. I can't force enlightenment by even making myself like Oprah or whatever, that type of thing. And I, and I know it's not greed that you were saying, but it, it that that kind of thing goes hand in hand once you have that type of crowd. You get what I'm saying? There's no Once you're trying to build that big crowd, there's nothing else you can do but ask them for a check. You, you get what I'm saying? Because after a while, you know, you got 40 million people saying, oh, panic, you're the man. There's no way you can teach them to be independent. You know what I mean? To be self-sufficient, which is, which is really the true message of a teacher, to try to teach other people to become teachers. So by the time you have that mass of following, it's impossible for you to train them to be teachers. You can only train them to be followers. Okay, so... Mm-hmm. Okay. So... Okay. So, okay. Well, I just wanted to find out what your uh, your intent was and where your mind was in terms of uh, these arts. Um, okay, bro. All right, bro. Good luck. All right, peace. 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 All right, area code three zero one. Area code three zero one. You on the air? Name and peace. where you calling from? Calling from Maryland. Peace, peace yeah. brother. Peace, peace. How you doing? Um, I I kind of had a well, more of a comment and a question. Um, the other day, my well, on the twenty first, I forgot what type of anomaly was happening up in the sky. But anyway, the story is, I was coming from my brother's birthday celebration, his birthday was that night, and my mom, neighbor, my uncle was hanging out on the back porch. I'm back. I'm inside. So they come running in, talking about they want me to kick this big bug out back. So I'm like, all right, I'm a man. It's a bug. All right, let me go squash this joke. So I go out back, and it is a big-ass moth, not even from this part of where I'm from. It was just big-ass bug, size of the, br- the size of the brick, blue, black, and kind of had some orange. I ain't know, like, where the hell it was from, but it had me go right back inside, like, nah. It's chilling. It's cool. If it try to defend itself, I'm out. And I want to know what that's probably all about. Huh? <laughs> well, what I was saying uh, is, it was, it was. I saw something that was not even from from my it, area. It's a, it's a big, it's a big moth. You saying? Yeah, it was right. like a moth type thing. It looked like a Pokemon to me. But I'm not going to actually call it a Pokemon because, you know, it's, it's the you know, reality and shit. It, 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 was, uh, it was the Mothman prophecies. I don't know what it was. Um, right, you right. You have to look up um, shamanism. No, I ain't um, kidding. It was, a, it was animals it, and shamanism. Know, it looked like it looked like with his wings. I was just like, no, nah, I'm going to let it be. I don't know if that's your motherfucking go to. Sure. Yeah, I guess, uh, like Aline said, look up some shamanistic animals or some symbols. See if you need right. something. Right, because uh, the morph uh, means transformation. Right, morph is so transformation. Morph, right, means transformation. So um, when you look it up in shamanistic animals, Doc, so, I mean, that's what you was dealing with. But that's what you've seen, that's what came to you then um, that could possibly be one of your totems. So, you know, you definitely need to do more research on it. On the moth? Okay. Going into a level of transformation or whatever. Okay, I'm, I'm good. I'm going to do the knowledge on that. Thank you. Peace. Yeah, peace. All 
All right. We got Ariel Cole. Here we go. We got Ariel Cole. Two zero two. Two zero two. You on the line? Peace. Peace. Oh, so excited! I got in. I was so excited. Hi, um, we're calling from DC, and I have a well, I have a question. Um, mm-hmm. for Baba Panic, I looked, I listened to one of your shows before, and mm-hmm. you had gave a book list about this book called Necronomicon, mm-hmm. and I only been studying this book for about let's say five months. And I think this book's first of all too heavy for me. And um, you said it's too I, I think so because I'm reading it. I really, I don't know if it's me. I'm not getting it. Is it too much for me or what? Mm-hmm. And then my second question was like, what could I do to stop smoking tobacco? Like, what type? What type of? What could I do? Because I really want to stop, and I don't do it when I'm in public. I do it by myself, and I really wish I could stop. It's a terrible habit, and I, I don't know. Well, I, I hate for it to sound like a cheap uh, uh, transition, but people will <laughs> smoke my third pack and stop smoking tobacco. That's an uh-huh. option, or you're just going to have to get some Nicorette and just chew it out. <laughs> now, um, you know, or uh, uh, maybe a lean has some information there. Now, with the Necronomicon, um, you – what book have you read first or tried to read first? Uh, okay. So first I got this it was a I got this like a workshop book. Start reading it and that was pretty good. No, and, the necro, no, in terms of the necronomicon. Oh no, I just heard you talking about it and I was like, mm, oh, it sounds you, interesting you about the Donald Piper. You didn't try to read it yet. You didn't try to read it yet. No, I tried to read the beginning, and I was just like, "Wait a minute, hold up, what is this?" And which book? Which which book did you try to read in the beginning? Uh, the The Wanderings of Alderaan. Uh, Alderaan. Mm-hmm. But it might be something like all of this information is, isn't just. Uh, 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 you shouldn't want it to be easy because if it was easy, then it's not worth it. Mm-hmm. But there is a path to understanding more of the Necronomicon. First, you need to understand where it came from. Mm-hmm. Um, it is writing from a white writer named H.P. Lovecraft who wrote fiction. Now, mm-hmm. his work, horror, horror as we know it today, is, is uh, uh, I would say, is old to H.P. Lovecraft. So... Two things happened with his writing in the early uh uh in nineteen uh nineteen oh whatever it was. Early in his uh writing, uh because he himself said they were dreams and he himself said they were fiction, uh and he wrote them for a comic book called Weird Tales at first. They were short stories. Two things started to happen. He was regarded by some as a literary genius and the others as an occultist that was having these dreams. So there's so much lore around him that there are occult, and what he did was uh, made his books or his work what they call public domain, meaning anyone could write and not have to pay him money to do that. Anybody could write on the subject of what then was called the Cthulhu mythos, wasn't called the Necronomicon yet. And no one would have to pay his estate because he made it public domain, and everyone has. So for years, this has been a phenomenon, this Necronomicon. So now halfway through, through, half the people had split and said it was an occult uh, uh, occult writings. The other half just made Freddy Krueger, like, for instance, um, Stephen King is an admitted bitch of Lovecraft. So the Stephen King-type movies, Phantoms, Evil Dead, Cabin in the Woods, uh, Johnny Depp, The Ninth Gate, when you hear the movies Creature from the Black Lagoon, The Blob, Morph, uh, well, Morphine Prophecy is based on the real thing, mm-hmm. Species, uh, all of these aliens, 
all of these types of movies mimic something evil, something black has returned, Phantoms, Ghost Ship. All of those were Necronomicon-ish movies. Now, on the occult side, you had W.H. Mueller, who was really Kenneth Grant, a um, few other writers, uh, Pseudonomicon by Phil Hines, but the, the most comprehensive writer is Donald Tyson that spent most of his, his uh, time on Necronomicon stuff. So what you have, what you were picking up was in cult, a cultist interpretation of, of his literary work. Because, again, if he made it public domain, that means anybody could take it, including myself. Not only can I write it word for word and not get sued, I can make my own interpretation of it. So what you have is you, you kind of got to know where the stuff came from to see what Donald Tyson's commentary is on Al Zared. The first story that H.P. Lovecraft wrote was The Mad Arab, The Wanderings of Al Zared, or it was actually uh, The Hound, which was the, the actual first story. And it's a story about this mad Arab or this Arab that went crazy in the desert because he interfaced with what later on became the Necronomicon, Cthulhu mythos. So it was the deity Cthulhu. Cthulhu. Now, what was interesting was Lovecraft would tell you this, these stories came from his dreams, but he was able to dream, wake up, write a story, and continue in another dream with the story. He would mm-hmm. actually get installments. So anybody who's in a cult would say, if he's continuing off from a dream where he left off from, that's spirits. While mm-hmm. regular humans are saying, no, he just had a, a one of those minds, he was a recluse, and so on and so forth. But he used to actually pick up on the stories years after it wasn't just one story. He would have installments to these stories. He had about seven or eight major deities, Cthulhu, Azathoth, Yasathoth, Nirlahotep, Shub Niggeroth, um, I'm missing a couple of more. Uh, uh, it was the one with the A. Uh, nevertheless, he would give these installments. So later on, first they were called the Cthulhu mythos because there was a mythology, and then later on people started calling it collectively the Necronomicon. This is something he just never used. In 1977, there was a bookstore owner named Simon who said, well, people are coming in looking for Necronomicon, and there's a book that doesn't exist. (laughs) So he wrote a book called Necronomicon, known as the Simon Necronomicon, which he used a lot of Sumerian deities, which with itself it became a very popular fraud. And, And he just recently released a book talking about all the shit that happened in 1977 when he released that book, Son of Sam and all the crazy shit that was going on in the 70s when he released that book. But people wanted the original Lovecraft deities. And so ultimately Donald Tyson and there's this a uh, hand five, uh, uh, Phil, Phil uh, what's his name, Daniel Harms, Encyclopedia uh, of Cthulhu, um, there's a punk series, which is still comic book style, where they use other writers to write on the Necronomicon. See, when H.P. Lovecraft was alive, he gave permission to people to write on it, and he was alive while people were writing on it, like Robert Block, August Derelict. So there's thousands of these Necronomicon monsters at this point, but the original Lovecraft monsters... Uh, um, start with Al Al Zared, the wanderings of Al Zared in the desert. So when you hear, when you read Donald Tyson, if you don't know a lot of this information, what he's saying is going to escape you. Because the idea is you're reading that book after you know what Lovecraft is, his impact. There's another book called uh, The Necronomicon Files. By, it's also by Daniel Harms and uh, another author. And in it, they talk about the, liter- the literary impact of, of the Necronomicon, the movies, you know, in media, and the occult impact. Now, the point of all of this is in the mythology, the chief deity or the chief priest, Cthulhu, comes from Saturn. 
and they eventually rule the world with Cthulhu's spawn. There's a there's a war with the elder gods, and Cthulhu and his minions basically go to sleep in an island that's sunk in the Pacific Ocean, which is akin to the Atlantean story. And the story goes, Cthulhu will one day rise and uh, and 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 wipe out humanity. This is the same Osirian story. This is the same the Titans will rise story. So just the mere fact that. Lovecraft is telling a story that's in synchronicity with most mythology on the planet, basically an old, ancient energy that returns, tells you that this shit is a cult. And also the movie The Fog and the Mist is also about uh, Necronomicon shit. Um, And I'm missing, like, at least 30 movies that are Necronomicon. A Lovecraft movie that was written by him is... uh, uh, the Reanimator. If everybody remembers the Reanimator, yeah. that's Love Lovecraft actually wrote that movie. And there's another movie called In the Mouth of Madness, where yeah. Lovecraft has a famous story in the Mountain of Madness. So in the Mouth of Madness, this guy goes insane looking for this author and goes into this dimension. All of that is loosely based on Lovecraft and he starts killing people and the world ends. All that's Lovecraft shit. And they're loosely based now on Lovecraft. The Frighteners is also loose by Peter, which later did the Lords of the Ring, is loose is Lovecraft esque in his writing. Stephen King, Dean Kuntz, all of that. Jason Freddy is all Lovecraft horror. Prior to that, it was all that Edgar Allan Poe in the Raven shit. So prior to Lovecraft, horror was like Dracula, the mummy. Frankenstein. When Lovecraft came in again, his stories, I have Bobby sent me books and books on Lovecraft shit, and I'm not a fictional reader, but I read some of them stories. The shit is just creepy for fiction. There's just, like, all the stories where you see, like, uh, like, um, like, circus freaks and shit. He has this shit called the cats. That's just, just weird. The way he's just Telling the story, you actually reading the shit, getting chills. So as a writer, his descriptions was like insane. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing that's ever matched it. And he was just weird old recluse, lived with his moms. It was in Rhode Island. Shit is just weird. Shit is just weird. But all that to say, once you know his lore, his story, the the height that's around him, when you read the occultist understanding of it, you'll love it. Now, what I did, there's a chapter in my book where I broke down all of his monsters to the human body, which is off the hook. It's something I teach in class, and that's that's usually the last thing I teach in class because you're dealing with the deepest reaches of your subconscious mind, your primal urges. Your primal urges is looked at as these monsters. Your humanity, see, what he talks about is these monsters that were before humanity. See, if we... We think in their monsters like because we're so used to the devil, but they're actually monsters in terms of if you compare it to humanity, because you would be a monster. Because I explained to people in class that without your human mindset, without your human uh, 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 socialism or your moralism that was trained to you, you would be that same monster. You only respect your elders because you were trained to respect your elders. You only don't eat cookies for dinner like a monster and put on clothes because somebody told you to do that. If you had your way, you'd be running around shit, you know what I'm saying, on some Tarzan and shit. So somebody <laughs> said, don't do that. Until so somebody said, respect your elders. Don't curse. Yeah. Sit up straight. Cross your legs. Uh, a lady wears a dress. A, a man does this. So you were trained as a human to act a certain way. Yeah. Like how many times did you want to crack someone's spine just for them cutting you off in the line? You just under or you know drop you know I tell it every guy here knows you wish you could just feel you could get titty hellos just feel a titty go high feel a titty but you know you're going to jail you know what I'm saying so we can't do titty <laughs> you know there's a consequence to titty hellos titty greetings so so but in your mind every guy in here knows if you could give titty greetings you would give titty greetings. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if you could do it, but you ain't, you can't do it. So, but if if I was that person doing it, you would say one thing: he's a fucking monster. 
know what I'm saying? If you know we had our way, you wouldn't even wear no drawers. You know what I'm saying? You wouldn't even wear no drawers. And you'd be like, hey, you know, you'd be the, you'll be the monster. You know what I'm saying? So they're not talking about actual monsters. They don't exist. They're talking about your subconscious urges, which is what Cthulhu stuff, nigger off, um, uh, in a uh, 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 um, uh what's his name? Uh, Nirola Hotep. All of these, all of these deities represent the primal Kundalini, primal chakra, primal soul. Uh, the Dagon represents the primal hypothalamus gland. So I, I go through all of that shit in my book, actually, and we do that one in class. But once you understand it, it puts it all together. You get what I'm saying? So it's it's not heavy in terms of you as a black girl can't get into it. It's just that you haven't went through the path to receive that yet. But this is our shit. They're talking about the black man, black girl. Are you yeah. scared of who you are, black girl? <laughs> you know, I, was reading, I was reading a book, and I'm like, because every time I read something, I try to compare it to myself. Like, hold up, what is this? Is this really talking about some stuff inside of me? I always, like, right. I is. look at stuff like that. And I was reading, I was like, hold up, wait a minute. I'm getting, like, I was getting creeped out. By the time I finished the first chapter, I was like, wait a minute. I don't know if this right. I'm ready for this. You know? Let me tell you, if, 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 if you are... Uh, are, are on the fence about are they talking about a black woman? All you have mm-hmm. to do is get get your hair wet, and then we'll see who Cthulhu really is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let them throw your ass in the pool. You know what I'm saying? You will yeah. become a fucking yard tips off on it. <laughs> you, know <laughs> you will become shove nigger off on their ass. Let them throw your ass in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh my God. <laughs> Let your baby daddy don't. Pay that goddamn child support. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, Cthulhu rise. <laughs> I am Cthulhu. Oh shit! I better pay her. Oh, get this nigga some pull-ups. I better hurry up and get this nigga some pull-ups. <laughs> But that, but that, that's it, Brother Penny. That's all I wanted to ask. And I listen to y'all all the time. And thanks for dropping the wow. knowledge. You know? I'm here We're listening. glad to have you. It's always good to hear somebody. Good. How old are you, sister? I'm 26. 26. Young and ready for action. So that's good. I like to hear young folks into this shit because it's going to shape their life forever. And, yeah. um, you know, you, you're on it and um. I said, a lot of stuff, just get the prerequisite information. What Bobby Hammond did for me was he gave me a lot of background information. So when I when I um, was able to study it, I, like, kind of knew where it was coming from. You get what I'm saying? So always try to look for the background information on something. Like, so if you got an H.P. Lovecraft book and you hear him talking about it, Google, Google, at a, Google it as well. Because if you look up... Al Zared, you'll find a wiki, he has a Wikipedia page, and and it's and it's spelled out plain and simple where it came from. You get what I'm saying? That's how you research that. You get what I'm saying? So you you look at stuff that way, then when you read it, you kind of have a better idea of what it is you're getting into. Very important. Very important. Thank you. Um, we're going to continue on to the next caller. We're going to go to area code 404. Area code 404, you're on the line. Hey. hey. Wow. Is your radio on? Yeah, your let's go to area code 347. Area code 347, you're on the line. Area code 347? Not there, I guess. Every code 334. Every code 334. You're on the line. Peace, peace. Y'all can hear me? Peace, God. Yo, peace, Panic. Peace, Arlene. Hey, first of all, I want to, um, I'm, Panic, you're in the Atlanta area. I'm in Alabama, man. First of all, I want to invite you to come down to our 10th annual Chitlin Eating Festival this year, man. Oh yeah, no doubt. Look, it up. <laughs> no, I was just, I was just fucking with you. No, no, seriously though. I got a question, but first I want to say 
the fly shit that happened. Like I've been in listening or whatever and into the knowledge only for a couple of years. But um interesting thing happened, like in November, my sister comes through and she's not conscious at all. She's like, um, I got you a gift and she's like, um, you know what to do with it or whatever. So I'm like, she keeps saying, you know what to do with it. She's like, you got to put the butt to the door, the booty to the door. So I'm like, what are you talking about? And she goes in this Avon bag and she pulls out an elephant. So I'm yeah. like, what the fuck? So first thing I'm thinking, damn, okay, this is some Ganesh shit. You know what I'm saying? It's not a Ganesh statue, but it's an elephant. And it was mm-hmm. like, it's weird that she's giving this to me because I'm just, you know, getting up on this. And she has no clue. And then so she like, well... Your father used to always have these elephants. My pops died when I was like six, you know what I'm saying? So she was mm-hmm. like, he used to always have these elephants and say, keep them, point the bus to the door, and it'll bring money in the house or whatever. So I'm mm-hmm. tripping off that shit because I'm like, damn, you know, this got to be him sending this shit to her because <laughs> she don't right. know. And she's just looking at it on some, you know, regular traditional shit or whatever. And it was ironic that I was just starting to learn about Ganesh and shit like that, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, well... What winds up happening, like I said, so I've been dealing, I was dealing with the Ganesh energy or whatever, dealing with that, and I didn't, I even now, I don't, I, I need to get, I don't have an actual Ganesh statue, but I use that elephant. You see what I'm saying? And um, mm-hmm. I did with, so you, I heard turning up, so talking about doing the curry bath and all that, you know what I'm saying? So I did mm-hmm. that, but as I've been, as I've been dealing with this now, I'm starting to see that other energies are on the same uh, line with it, like um, Anubis and mm-hmm. uh, like a leg mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah, and so that's, all these, that's and then I have been right. having, yeah, I've been having all these dreams about the dogs and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? And I always had a fear of dogs or whatever. But I've been having these dreams about the dogs, and then, you know what I'm saying? My my wife, she don't know nothing about the shit, and I'm just starting to really, I just, I've been hearing a leg by a leg, but I just really looked it up like about a month ago to really start learning, and I peeped in his colors is red and black, mm-hmm. which always been my favorite colors. But then on top of that. My wife out the blue the other day, she comes and she brings me a red and black pair of shoes. So I'm like, you know, I'm connecting all this shit. But then with my pops, it's like, I remember growing up, he had a picture, and I'm thinking now it was probably Kali, because it's Kali like blue, right? With a lot of hands. And he had this well, oil well, painting. And Krishna, Krishna's, uh, Kali's black, Krishna's blue. Oh, Jesus. okay. So it was, it was like a blue. It was an oil painting of a, you know, and it had like a lot of hands. And I remember being a shorty. Like being scared of the joint or whatever, but I just figured now I'm like, okay, my pops probably he knew something, and I guess you know I asked some of the family members, but they like, nah, he wasn't into this and that, but something was there, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So no anyway, and like I said, I used to have dreams about him, like he'd meet me on a plane and give me these special powers or whatever. So I'm looking at it like he's been trying to talk to me now, hoping for it. But what my question is, after all that said and done, I got the book to um. Complete magician table, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm just I'm kind of lost on how to apply it. Like, you know what I'm saying? I know how well, to. I know. How to, go ahead. Well, it comes from uh, Crowley seven seven seven, where mm-hmm. uh, like uh, you find the number, your number frequency, and mm-hmm. you could uh, you could. Uh, follow that number through every pantheon. So you know how they have a list of every single pantheon? If, yeah. so if your number was a seven, you can go through every seven and find out what it relates to and see what okay, it, so what I it need means to, and whatever, so whatever. Okay, so basically I need to just, whatever my number is, that's how that's right. the basic way to use it. Yeah, I would okay. say get a basic book on mm-hmm. numerology because there's this, this, this Different ways you could find numbers. You could you could just use all the contractions in your name, and, yeah. you, and then you could use all the vowels in your name. And that's the hidden part of you. So it, it'll be okay. like that's the hidden part of you. That's the vowel part. You could do with birthdays. So find a book on numerology and see what you're most comfortable with in terms. Yeah, of I got numbers. a couple of those, and yeah, and I yeah. just figure out you know the number. I just wasn't exactly. like I said. I was just trying to figure out the best way to apply the book because I already recommend it on another show, and I got it. And I was reading yeah. it, and I was like, okay, I'm lost like a motherfucker. I don't, you know what I'm saying? I kind of, yeah, it's not, it's know, not a read, it's a reference. But, yeah, it's a reference yeah. book. It's not a, uh, yeah. it's not a read through book. It's a reference book. So if you have to reference, if you keep, for instance, let's say you just keep having a dream about the number five, you can yeah. say, well, so what then does I that mean? Right. Okay, gotcha. So really gotcha just decoding the symbol of number, uh, uh, days planetary influence is 
Zodiac. Okay. Fair. All right, I appreciate that, man. But that's that's all mm-hmm. I wanted, mm-hmm. so I can know what best best way to use that book and apply it. And I appreciate mm-hmm. y'all, man. Good night. Hold it down. No mm-hmm. problem, brother. That's good. That's what's up. Good night. All right, for those that want to call in, the number is six two six four one four thirty five thirty five. That's six two six four one four thirty five thirty five. Call on in. You still got another half an hour left of the show. So let me go back to area code 404. Still party. Right, seven. Yep. Area code 347. You're on the line. Uh, hey, uh, hey, brothers! Uh, I wanted to call mm-hmm. in again, and ask for one more question. How y'all doing again? All right, all right. that's cool. Well, yeah. uh, this question is for uh, you know all three of y'all. So you know, pitching. Yeah, I know the whole uh, atheist thing, right? Mhm. Uh-huh. Uh, I just wanted yeah. to get y'all thoughts, or uh, because I know it's like a whole white people consciousness type type of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to know like. Y'all thoughts or y'all dissertation on that whole thing? Well, mine is that for a so-called melanated person to say that they don't believe in God means that they don't believe in themselves because they right. are God. Because all the yeah. mythos in the ancient cultures is based on their very existence. Yeah. We are the right. oldest people on the planet Earth. And every other culture, group, tradition, race, or races that came after us have within their mythos about us being the gods of this planet. Exactly. And not just of right. this planet, but of all the planets in the universe. Yeah. In other words, we right. was never just relegated to just one planet. You know, and so therefore they know of the abilities in which that we possess, which is the um the gate opener which is known as the pineal gland, and that ability in order to ask to project, ask to travel, soul travel, uh, biolocation, remote viewing, um, psychomancy, which deals with clairvoyance, clear audience, clear guessing, clear sentience, um, psych chemistry, you know, telekinesis, telepathic. We have all these gifts. But this only comes through the by, um, by way of um, highly developed um, endocrine gland system known as your chakra system. So you have to work on it. You have to master it. So um, mm-hmm. being that we have melanin, you know, melanin is one of the key components of activated endocrine gland system. You know, so without melanin, you lack that ability. You know, um, right. you lack the ability in order to go yeah. in. You know, so therefore, you know, every mythos was talking about us. And we have to realize it and get back in tune with the mythos in order to um, understand who we really are. That's what all these stories are about, whether we say that they're yeah. alcohol, whether they saying that they're literal, historical, whatever the case is. Um, as Brother Panic always broke down, there's an exoteric and there's an esoteric. Um, right. We, um, deal on first world order radio. We deal with the esoteric information, right? In which means that in a meaning, you know, what does this really mean? You know, uh, what does it mean to you, or what does it mean to me? You know, so I mean, that's the way in which that we um see it. My point is, but the panic. Yeah, that's 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 well said. Well said. So then we look at the flip side. Why white people can even say the word atheist? Because as the lead just pointed out. And I think it's preposterous because we, because we are those gods. So, and since they don't believe in themselves, since they are, there's nothing to them, since they were created here on the planet and they have no divine origin, they are not gods. So they cannot believe in right. uh, themselves. So they are atheists by nature because there's nothing in them that is divine. Or, right. or, or, or let's say what's in them is divine. They may have the potential. I'll be a little bit more nice. Because even a roach can uh, evolve, and they did start out with the stuff that we created. They started out from our DNA, 
but let's just look at where they are in, in the game right now. In the game, them calling themselves atheists is right on point. They have nothing to offer, nothing to uh, uh, they have nothing to believe in, and no. and even the idea of in in they still can't even admit even in black men's black women's ignorance they still believe in us. All you have to do is watch the MTV Awards to see who God is. You get what I'm saying? See who's really running this. In our ignorance, every goddamn thing they do. That you seen that Miley Cyrus bullshit? Oh yeah, yeah. it's the yeah. world. You know, uh-huh. yeah. flat ass can't dance, and he's still trying to make this. <laughs> he's still trying to redeem Madonna's ass. This this fucking idiot dr- dancing with a dress up like Beetlejuice and shit with that fucking striped suit on. Him. And I'm sitting there like, you know, this, this is pathetic. And all the white rap acts that come on is pathetic. They down down to Justin Timberlake. He's a fucking weak rendition of a weak rendition. You know what I'm saying? A copy of a fucking copy. Brother Daoud said he danced like one of them trees on goddamn Lord of the Rings. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like, it's like uh, but but they all, you know, Khadija looked at it and said, God damn, well, they just all trying to be niggas. They're doing bad versions. Niggas is doing bad versions of niggas these days. So they're doing bad versions of bad versions of niggas. You know what I'm saying? Usher's a bad version of Michael Jackson and fucking uh, Chris Brown's a bad version of Usher. You know what I'm saying? And fucking Justin Timberlake's a bad version of Chris Brown. So it's like uh, they have nothing. So in our ignorance, they're still trying to copy us. So the, the, the true atheist is them by their nature because there's nothing in them that they believe in. And their self-hate has been reflected on their true God. You get what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Yeah. So, so if, if you hear the dialogue that they say about the, the common slave, the reality is it's them. It's them. You get what I'm saying? So when they talk about the inferiority and the smaller brain power, it's them. Mm-hmm. We wanna, yeah. Let's be real. We want to get down to it. This is about genetics. You know what I'm saying? They say you ain't been here long enough to even play the game with us. So, no. um, you know, we the, the the title of God Goddess is a level, a level of consciousness. If we ain't made that level of consciousness, it's not a thing you are. It's 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 it, it's a reflection, a realization of what you truly are. Kind of, it's not something that you kind of. Um, it, it's it's not a being. You get what I'm saying? It's a reflection of what you truly are, and really, God consciousness is something that you. That you have to see on the, you 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 have to see within yourself. You can only have melanin to do that. So the true atheist is them by nature because they have there's no nothing. The black person saying that is just as Lean pointed out, just a form of, of deep ignorance. Exactly. Self, yeah. Self, mm-hmm. you know, you know, deep ignorance and and uh, self delusion actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They yeah, even said uh they even said something. There was like uh there was like um I think one I was looking on YouTube, right? And one uh I was looking at some comments because the whole atheism thing actually started me up. You know what I'm saying? I, I didn't really believe that whole shit so I'm on the there's no God or whatever. But I didn't think there was a God over me at that time when I was into that whole atheist thing. That's why I could really gravitate towards it because right. the whole Christian thing, right. I wasn't really fucking with that shit at first, you know what I'm saying? So uh, that's why I really gra- – that's like one of my first points of consciousness, that whole atheism thing, you understand? Mm-hmm. So sometimes, you know, on YouTube I used to look at certain videos, and I would actually see some people – these mugs used to say uh, there's no such thing as the soul because they used to talk about psychology. They used to say right. the real meaning of psychology is the study of the soul. And the mugs used to say there's no such thing as the soul. I'm like, ah, now, now, right now, I know who real motherfuckers are talking about. Mm-hmm. 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 See, well, see, usually you're just saying atheist because there's nothing else to say. You was just at a point where you divorced yourself from religion, and you just didn't have knowledge yet. You get what I'm saying? So you, you would have to say something like, "I'm an atheist." Um, uh, uh, see, white folks, that's a process for them. Bobby Hemmett actually was saying this. He said, "He said, well, that the the conspiracy movement is actually the white man's civil rights movement." 
so yeah, that's profound. They got really big on this conspiracy thing. Their God, because now now that they're going against conspiracy, the powers that be in government, government is pro-religion. So they have to say no just based on the fact that they're conspiracy theorists and the government loves Jesus. So they have to say no to that. So they have nothing else to add. They can only take away. You get what I'm saying? So it's not like they can say, I'm... I'm not um, I'm not a religious person, but I believe in this and that. So now they say, well, I don't believe in anything. I'm an atheist. Then you see them go buck, they go hard for the Constitution now. Like this is a real fucking thing now. Oh, but the Constitution doesn't say that. But your constitutional rights, that's some shit they made up too. You know what I'm saying? Yep. But wait a minute, that's against the Constitution. Well, I know my I know my rights and all this dumb shit. So that became their God, the Constitution. You'll hear him talk about that. Now, for a black person, you're usually divorcing yourself from religion because you're about to get knowledge. So we just say atheist, but it, it, it does, we never, I don't even know, ask the deepest Christian, they'll never say there ain't no spirit. If they go in there and some shit fall over in the house, they ain't sitting around going, oh, that's just Jesus. They go, oh, we need to get the fuck up out of here. I don't give a fuck how Christian they are. Niggas ain't denying no spirit shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. Mm-hmm. No, right. no matter how Christian they are. So we can't divorce ourselves from it. We, we, we can play ignorant and do all of this stuff, but it'll never really leave us. You know what I'm saying? A true black atheist is just... I've, somebody who's really hurting. You know what I'm saying? It's really hurting. They really hurt and hate themselves. So white people, they go through this process in their consciousness... But they don't have nothing to put back. Jordan Maxwell is a prime example. Mr. Conspiracy Theory, but when he and he's one of them dudes in Zeitgeist who's excellent. He's a master at destroying religion and where this shit came from. But he has not one iota to say, well, here's the divinity in that statement. Even no. though he's dropping mad divine shit. And you look at Zeitgeist, but if you ain't black, it ain't got nothing to do with him. He's basically telling you, it ain't got nothing to do with me. I know religion's bullshit, and I'm going to tell you why. The sun god and December 25th and three days of the sun and Virgo. and it tells you all of that shit, but it ain't, saying, but it ain't got nothing to add to it. You get what I'm saying? They never have nothing to add. So you were just at a point where you just didn't have nothing to add until you got that knowledge. Mm-hmm. Exactly. But atheism, it, it, that's, that's a whole, you know, because it comes with more than not believing in this God, like you said. He starts having, if you don't believe in his God, you have to start questioning the soul and the origin of this. And niggas ain't ready to answer all that. You know what I'm saying? Well, then what's the origin of humanity? Evolution. Niggas ain't believe in that bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They ain't believe in that bullshit. Or, 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 or you can literally go but so far with that bullshit. If white people ain't got nothing else. They can go in that shit with 100% zeal. Like, uh, what's the white boy? Smart at destroying religion, but as soon as you get into a metaphysical thing, it's over. Uh, Bill Maher, kill these motherfuckers, made religious, clowning these niggas, making them look, hey, he, uh, he's a confessed atheist. I've seen preachers get on this show. Oxy. I think it was called Religious huh? Oxy. I think the name of the um, joint yeah. that he did was called Religious Oxy. Something yeah, like religious, uh, religious, or religiosity, or something. I think it was right. religious or something like that. Mm-hmm. But, but, but you, um, but you know, stand-up comedian. He had politically uh, correct, and now he has that shit on HBO. So where he goes hard, you know, on atheist and shit. I've seen him tear this fucking white reverend the fuck up. You know, the white reverend. We should use the Bible to get together and black people and free them. Say fuck all of that. <laughs> shit all over this dude. Answer that. The dude was stuttering. You know, he shits on him hard. And then there was this uh, brain surgeon or whatever he was who had a near-death experience. So he wrote a book on it. Oh, I was a butterfly. I was this and that. Just clown this thing for like a half an hour. I'm like, well, that's it. You go into the quantum world. So you're going to be and be able to connect to all things that's alive. You know what I'm saying? You're really really a part of the whole quantum collective now. You know what I'm saying? Makes sense. Shit all over them. And it's like, um, 
but he's a master at shutting down religion. You know what I'm saying? He he went through these motherfuckers with Jonah and the whale so hard. He's the funniest white boy to watch. But they ain't got nothing to add. They ain't got nothing. They ain't got no alternative. They ain't got no alternative. All they got is uh, all they got is is uh, 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 ain't no God. Smoke weed. Constitution. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. Right. In science. <laughs> yeah, 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 and that, and, and, and they they not even really respecting science because here you had a, a brain surgeon telling them some shit. You know what I'm saying? But he went off on the deep end. You know what I'm saying? And not really, really really respecting science, science. You know what I'm saying? But the science part, the the scientific shit that they want to hear. You know what I'm saying? Well, evolution yeah. and, 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 and it, it, what does it mean? It doesn't mean anything. Right. We came together on this bubble from apes. That's their shit. Y'all was born in a cave from apes. They know their story. Yeah, they do. They know their story. So all of that shit to say, uh, black people by nature shouldn't be, uh, you know, can't be, unless they're really, really that far down the line. You know what I'm saying? In terms of how much they hate themselves. Mm-hmm. They don't see no divinity with them, so they see nothing special with them themselves. That's what I would say. That's what I would say. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's very good. Yeah, it, I mean. Right, but the whole point, too, Ock, is that um, what moves your physical body? Right. If you say it's your mind, right. then what is your mind made out of? And which that... Right. You know, utilize the brain yeah. as the vehicle which operates through the physical body as the vessel. You would have to say energy. Right. You know right. what I mean? English transliteration is energy. In um, Hawaii, it's called Kahuna Mana. In Japan, mm. it's called Qi. In China, it's called Chi. In India, it's called Prana. In ancient Kemet, it's called Ra. So, right. because the words that we use, you know what I'm saying, getting the, the German word from good, you know, to now, as we use it with the English God, it's still talking about energy. You know what right. I'm saying? So, for you to deny that there's energy which is moving through you, and actually you are the energy which are, which is moving the physical vessel. You are the energy that's moving that. You know what I'm saying? Right. So you are God, and that's what we're talking about in that type of arena. You know what right. I'm saying? For atheists to say that they don't believe in God, they're saying that they deny an energy, which is Newton's first law. You know what I'm saying? Right. Which is how he's first law, that all is mind and everything in the universe is mental or is energy. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Now, what Brother you Payne, that, that was a matter of fact. Never Brother died. Payne, that was, that one of his opening statements tonight. Right. It was. You know what I'm saying? He told you to get the Kabbalion. The first principle, mentalism. The all is mind right. and everything in the universe is mental. It's in other mental. words, it's mental. energy. It's energy. Right. Which so, never dies. Right. So, so, never they, dies. so when they say that they atheist, right. that means denying their whole Egyptology or Kemetology or whatever they want to refer to it as, they denying the signs of energy, which is apparent in all around us, which means that it's dealing with electromagnetism. Um, they right. denying the forces of centrifugal and centrifugal force. You know, right. in in other words, they're not scientifically looking at it. You know what I'm saying? Metaphysics right. is nothing but us analyzing what operates the physical body and the physical tangible things from its spiritual counterpart. We're right. saying, okay. Your physical body exists, yes, all right, but there must be something invisible in which that is moving it. I can't see the breath, right. so the breath that animates that whole, right. right, the holy breath must be that which animates it, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Only time I can see it is when it's cold outside and I blow on some shit. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. All right, other than that, you know what I'm saying, I basically don't even think about it unless I'm doing some serious meditation. Then I'm focused right. on how but even then, that's energy. Water mm-hmm. vapor. 
That's energy. Your body is three fifths, um, th- um, three fourths of um water. You seventy five percent water. You're an aquatic being. Water right. is energy. Water is emotion. Water is truth. Water is light. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So exactly. Is, right. So I'm talking about. That, so what I'm talking about that they deny the very existence. That's what I'm talking about. I mean, even on a scientific um um, um right. outlook. Right. On right. a scientific level, they they don't know what the hell they're talking about. No, it's and not then even they, debatable. They, 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 right, then they bring in that Europeanized shit in order to try to counteract <laughs> metaphysics, and there ain't no fucking possible way to do it. And that's no, why right. none of these motherfuckers can't damn deny metaphysics. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Pastor Ray Higgins tried getting at me on on Facebook about the using the term metaphysics, about the word metaphysics was um it's a um word in which that was coined by Aristotle. Well, who the fuck is Aristotle? <laughs> yeah, what the fuck does that mean? Based, right, it, didn't, right. it didn't exist. Right, based, right, based, based on um the book Stolen Legacy, written by George G. James, Aristotle, as well as the rest of them, Euripides, Socrates, right. Herodotus, right. all of them was trained in where? In Egypt. Right, right. All of them, students. And shit, and that's right. what you teach. Right. Teach Kate. Right. <laughs> right. So, so if it's wow. any. Um, philosophy in which that they inherited, that was the metaphysical philosophy. Because you look up the word um, metaphysics and you look up the word philosophy, they're synonymous. Yeah. Wow. Philosophy mm-hmm. and metaphysics is synonymous. It's the same thing. And guess what? Right. When you get a PhD, when you go to their school system and you become an alumni, an illuminated one, you get a PhD. Guess what the word PhD means? It means philosophy degree. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Don't fucking mm-hmm. play with me. No, they did right. the, the Socrates. None of them. They didn't, they didn't even finish the second degree of the mystery system. Exactly. They didn't even finish right. that. Right. That's degrees. what they. That's what they chilly too. Philosophy. They chilly Aristotle and crackers and Eur, uh, Euripides and all of them crackers there. Because those that's are the ones chilly. that were able. Those are the ones that were able to get a little bit of information out of us. That's it. And that's what L. That's what Brother L is saying. They actually never went through the whole mystery system, so all of their great thinkers only got fragments. Exactly. Of the mystery they had, system. They only we only gave them three degrees out of a nine right. degree system. Right. That's it. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. They brother, ran away that's, with it. Yeah, they ran away. Yeah, they had to run. They had to run with it. Yeah, trying to get, couldn't get everything. Get that, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. You're trying to get down with this shit for the longest. It ain't never happened. <laughs> We're still trying no. to do it on MTV. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, even with that whole new age thing, I'm seeing crackers in the store. I'm because I go to Barnes and Noble sometimes to get my books, right? Sometimes mm-hmm. I be in uh, the New Age section. That's where I usually um, I look for my books. I'm seeing all these crackers in in the uh, New Age section, and I notice I notice uh, just the way they act around the information. It, it seems fishy. You know what I'm saying? I feel like yeah. I'm, you know I feel like kind of uh, you know you feel that you feel that kind of out of place type of shit. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Yeah, yeah, they still in their mind. They, they think it's theirs. Somehow they discover some new shit. <laughs> Just the fact that they call it new age. Mm-hmm. Yeah, shit. What happened to the old age? And it's not new. It ain't old shit. Old shit. That's all. Yeah, I mean, they're pretty much a norm. They're, they're, they're fucking funny as hell. <laughs> they are. You can. Um, you know, you, you just can lose them. You can show them how much they don't know. You know, I used to do that shit in East West books. You know, because they used to be all eager to help you. Then you just ask them a question that they have no fucking idea what it is. Right. Well, I'll, I'll check back with you. I don't know. I don't know. Well, yeah. Well, this- I'm gonna- Wow, that anyway. that is a good one. That's a good question. Uh, <laughs> let me. Uh, I think I know. It. No, you don't, bitch. No, I don't. And you know, and especially me, I wear that hip hop shit, so they really think they're gonna coming in bedazzled me. Right. 
you know, you ask them some, you know, tell them some shit they ain't never heard of. Right. Oh, you fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> real funny. But, um, yeah, you know, real funny. But uh, it, it's really about knowing yourself. Like, see, Lean just dropped it. What was exactly. Like, um, know about energy. I mean, the common sense tells you, like, after it's all said and done, that, that's always been the question. Something's got to be animating you. What the fuck is animating you? You exactly. get what I'm saying? What is animating you? And um, that doesn't even make you ponder. You know what I'm saying? What started the... Let's even say you are this this haphazard blend that came together and all of a sudden you're homo erectus and walk the fuck around. What started that process? You get what I'm saying? What substance... Well, I'm hydrogen, carbon. Well, what are those substances then? You know what I'm saying? That came together to co to to make a man or a woman. What are those substances? Even on the physical level, you get what I'm saying. What started the process? You get what I'm saying. What overseen the process? So I mean, it's just no matter how wherever whatever point you end up at, you you still have to ask yourself, what the fuck is the origin of that then? Well, I started from a lighter. Well. What's the origin of a lighter? I started from lighter fluid. Well, what's the origin of lighter fluid? I started from a baseball bat. Well, what's the origin of a baseball bat? You know what I'm saying? There's never really no answer. There's something that had to put that into being or a certain substance that that something, something divine has to start somewhere to start any process. You, you never could get a, how would you say, a... a Never get down to the bottom of a, a, a satisfactory atheist answer. You know what I'm saying? No. There's got to be something. Uh, you know, you, you got to have something. And now we already know what it is. We already know it's melanin. We already know it's this life spark. We already know it's. We've been calling it the soul and and, and, and kundalini and all the rest of that stuff. But uh, you know what I mean? You, you you can't avoid that. You know what I mean? Somebody with common sense. That's what I would say. Mm-hmm. Oh, we in the last we five minutes. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, yes. 8 p.m. with Dr. Lean Bay, drleanbay.com. You could uh, get in contact with me at panicpack at hotmail.com. Uh, P-A-N-I-C-P-A-C-K And um, remember the classes are coming up So you want to get in these classes Now is the time to email Let's get it on Plenty of herb packs, CDs For meditation Spiritual baths, other products Ganesha crystals uh, Incense And all the jazz that you need Just send me an email I'd be more than happy to send you a list Of what we got going on no doubt. We want to thank y'all for listening to First World Order Radio. Definitely go and check out www.drlmlbay.com. That is the website to check out also. So once again, that's G-R-A-L-I-M-E-L-B-E-Y, drlmlbay.com. Check us out. We got those crystals for you, them chocolate crystals, as well as many other mm-hmm. items. So come on and check wow. us out. Also, we have um, classes in which that we um, have perpetual over the three month span in which that deals with the science of healing, which deals with Qigong, Tai Chi, Reiki, Pranic healing, Kundalini yoga, Tantra, Kriya yoga, all types of information in which that we go into. So, um, and also you get actual practice, hands on experience. Um, check us out. All right. Yes, sir. First World Order Radio. Finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. 
There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetic of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetic of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it.